First Corinthians chapter 3. We'll read from verse 10 to 13. I just want to strengthen your convictions briefly before we sit down. He says, According to the grace of God, Paul is speaking, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. Here's Paul's testimony. I have laid the foundation and another builder thereon. Then he says, But let every man, are we still together? Take heed how he built it. The foundation may be correct, but the way you build it can make the building still look wrong. Are we together? Next verse. It says, For other foundation, no other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The true, surest foundation for everything is Jesus Christ the word not just Jesus Christ the person seated in heaven Jesus Christ the word the living logos it says I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified the next verse please media now if any man build upon this foundation listen the foundation is fixed Christ but there are different kinds of vessels you can use to build it says gold silver read on precious stones uh -huh, wood hay stubble let's see the effect next verse read it if you are a Christian every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire of what quality the fire will try every man's work the fire will try every man's boast the fire will try every man's ministry the fire will try every man's business the fire will try every man's confession to see what sort it is that means regardless of the fact that we are all in christ there are people building with substances that when the fire blows upon it the only thing that will be left is the foundation because it cannot be destroyed but the building can crumble are we together the parable of the two builders the foundation was never destroyed but their one building collapsed into pieces listen the bible tells us that we're like a spiritual house being built and i like what paul says that i have done my part as a wise master builder i have guided you like a builder like an architect telling you the relevant dimensions where to pay attention the part that needs more cement the part that you may just need a block are we together now the part that needs to be well supported now he says but take heed as you build everyone claims to be building something everyone claims to be saying something everyone claims to know how to make things work but let me tell you the truth the bible says time i told you time does not decide anything it only reveals by the time that fire of time passes through you find out that many people will find out after several decades that they've been building nonsense building stories building shadows but the apostle said we have not taught you cunningly devised fables you know while i sat there the prayer in my heart i just said lord just help your people believe you and trust what you are doing in their lives you don't have to worry about what you are becoming just pay attention on the training. I sing praises to your name. Oh God. Praises to your name. Lift your hands and worship me.
of your life in thanksgiving as you watch with shock as you watch how how disastrous the life of a man can be when it is not built upon truth someday very soon you will step back and watch life like a movie and have tears from your eyes but not tears of sorrow tears of gratitude someday you will go to the place of prayer and not have a prayer point and say how can i be wicked to ask something else when you have done for me what no man can do what you are receiving is an is, is a visa for escape you are you are living you are living you may not appreciate it now you see you may not appreciate it now either because you are not seeing the results now or you have not been allowed to see the other side of disobedience but brothers and sisters i bet you in the name of the lord i want you to believe the things you are learning though we are few we're surrounded by men who have crossed river before and this is the song I'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. When my eyes behold your wonders. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Oh, God, you are my 
I've learned to walk in your way. For step by step, you lead me, and I will follow you.
us tonight. We are here to access the mysteries of the kingdom that will cause us to rise and to prevail. Lord, I pray that you will help us tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Before we sit down, if you are sick in your body, I want you to just lay your hands there. I started feeling the healing anointing right from home. I just want to minister to the sick in one minute. Lay your hands there. I want to take authority over the spirit of infirmity. I stretch my hands right now, inside, outside, online. Everyone under the sound of my voice who is a victim of the spirit of infirmity. I command that devil to leave you right now. I release the healing power of Jesus Christ right now. Let that anointing step into your body like a drug and cause perfection right now. I command every infirmity, every infirmity, you go now. Pains leave now. In the name of Jesus, pains leave now. Every kind of discomfort in your body, this is Mount Zion. I command that devil to leave in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Every spirit represented in this place that is not of God, please pay attention. I'm praying. There is a reason why I'm doing this. I just saw something in the spirit. Anyone here? Shalako Sibras Kadabri Shalabari under the influence of any spirit other than the Christ in the name that is above all names in this atmosphere of the globe right now I command those devils to go right now you have to leave the word of God is about to come out of them now in the name of Jesus everyone inside outside under the influence of any other force every other agency every other spirit every other communication outside of the spirit of the christ i command that devil to go now i dispel that spirit right now distractions through imagination distractions through understandings that destroy the speakings of the spirit distractions physical distraction orchestrated by spirits the spirit of slumber that caused men to sleep while the word of God comes I cast it out of your life now in the name of Jesus Christ keep your hands lifted I release upon you the spirit of understanding in the name of Jesus as I stretch my hands like a mantle the Bible says and open keep their understanding a man's understanding can be opened I open yours this night in the name of Jesus the Christ listen listen to me we'll soon sit down listen you see you don't have to be educated to understand spiritual things that would have been a big disadvantage to those who did not have the opportunity to go to school spiritual things are communicated by the spirit so whether you can speak english or not whether you are at whatever educational level it doesn't matter once you are in an atmosphere where the spirit of god is permitted the word has capacity to birth understanding one more time i stretch my hands to you and i command that whatever makes the word of god barren and unfruitful whatever makes the word of god unfruitful in the name of jesus i take it out of your life whatever makes you to doubt the word whatever poisons your faith so that as the word of god comes you doubt every philosophical imagination every scientific interruption to the quality and the power of the world i command you to live your life right now in the name of jesus christ open your mouth and pray one minute the spirit of understanding is upon me lift your voice and pray the spirit of understanding the ability to receive the ability to comprehend 
with all the saints, the length, the height, the depth, the width, the ability to comprehend, the ability to comprehend, the capacity to receive spiritual things. Are you praying? This is part of the meeting. This is a year that you must be blessed. It's your year of triumph for you to rise up like the eagle. Pray. Understanding. 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 Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. Yeah. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. Oh, I lay there, I lay there. His influence is upon you tonight, brothers and sisters. Like a hand upon a young, brooding upon your spirit to make a wonder out of your life. if you can I want you to pay attention to a very deep mystery I want to share with you tonight very deep spiritual mystery open your eyes open your spirit Lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to that's why i will lift up my voice yeah. 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 You're my peace. I'm prophesying someone's miracles again. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. This is our month of wealth. I want to share with you the mysteries that are responsible for certain strange occurrences in the lives of men and women. Please, I want you to pay attention. Tonight, I want to teach you the mystery of exemption. Write it down. The mystery of exemption. My spirit is overjoyed. You see, when the Holy Spirit begins to rejoice through my spirit like this, it's because prophetically he has seen that the word will be received. Hallelujah. 
you will receive something tonight. I assure you. Psalms 50, the mystery of exemption. Psalms 50, verse 15 and 6. Mantles have been given to the church. Mantles have been given to the church tonight. Mother Kai's arising from the gates of the church for the kings to be born, for the victory to be born, for the mantles to return, for the graces to return. Hali Hali Yo, Hali Yo, Hali Hali Yo, Yeh. Arising here tonight, man of power, arising from this place here tonight, for the kings to be born, for the mantles to return, for revival to return, for the power to return. Hey, baptism of mantles tonight believe me tonight is, is like an initiation into a realm of reality a realm of possibility there is such a provision in the kingdom there is such a provision in the kingdom that men can be exempted there is such a possibility in the dealings of God with man please be seated Psalms 50, verse 15 and 16. If it's possible for us to have amplified, that's great. Otherwise, no problem. You are immersed in a strong atmosphere of God's glory because of something you will hear. Brothers and sisters, God is not playing games with us. I want us to believe Him. Everyone read as I begin my teaching tonight. Just be sensitive to what the Spirit of God is doing inside and outside. Those outside, please, I want you to understand that there is no difference as far as the reach of the anointing is concerned. One, to read. And call on me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall... Stop there, 15. Stop there. Go back, please, 15. So, it's a two-way thing. You have your own role to play. Your role is, please keep it there honor and glorify me then he says call on me in the day of trouble and i will deliver you the shocking scripture that the lord led me to is verse 16 read if you're a christian 16 please go ahead and read are we bible students if God does not open your eyes to this thing, bah, you won't see anything. Believe me, revelation is a spirit. If there is no amount of cramming scripture and Bible study that gives you the spirit of revelation, God has to open the eyes of men. But unto the wicked, the word wicked there is not sinners. The idea there is unto those who are determined not to walk with me. He said, what right have you? We're talking about right here. We're talking about a legal access. 
What right have you to recite my statutes? I shall not die. I shall not die. I, will, I won't be poor. I will be rich. He said, what right have you to recite it? Everyone is talking, just talking. I won't be sick and you are dying. I won't be poor. It's clear you are getting poor. There is a mystery. Confession is a powerful provision but under certain conditions. See, let me tell you something. Half truth can destroy you like a lie. It can do the exact same thing a lie does to you. That's why Satan is not afraid of using half truth. Because it makes no difference to him. It says, what right have you to recite my status? So everyone is confessing. Wealth and riches are in my house. Everyone is confessing. Oh, I can't get into trouble. I, I can't have accident. It's impossible. And you are watching yourself die per second per second. What right have you? What right have you? That's the point you should circle media, not the wicked. What right have you to recite my status? Or take my covenant or pledge on your lips? Talk is cheap, brothers and sisters. But you see, the reason why many believers mock themselves in the presence of the world is we do not understand the systems of the kingdom. Say the systems of the kingdom. So we come around a dimension of reality and we mock ourselves. And the painful part is we are doing what is right. But the result is not there because it's not complete. God is obsessed with completion. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience, if and only when your obedience is complete. What right have you to be exempted? When there is a plague that is released upon people, what right have you to be exempted? This one is not free. What right? That means there is an authorization based on certain things that are done are we together now what right have you to say a bike will not kill me what right have you to say tomorrow i will still wake up alive you know many made boastful statements like that and they are no more today many have said in the name of jesus if by the end of this year i'm not rich except god has not called me the years have passed nothing has happened exemption is a possibility that can be accessed by the saints exemption exemption the quality of being prevented from experiencing woes the quality of being prevented from experiencing the pain the tragedy of people the quality of being exempted or being taken away from defeat the quality of perpetual triumph not necessarily the quality of not being in trouble but the quality of an assured escape as guaranteed as God himself is there such a provision in the kingdom if yes what are the keys to walking in such a reality I have taught us here again and again that our lives are defined by the mysteries we have access to so two people can walk upon the earth and their experiences will be the same remember the scripture I read to you the problem is never the foundation the problem is never that you are not born again but the quality of our lives the same way you have two students in a class taught by the same teacher so the problem is not the teacher in the same institution so the problem is not the institution under the same condition the problem is not the condition but then their results will differ and sometimes sharply that's how it is in life two believers two individuals two families two personalities can be within the same environment yet their results will differ why because the bible says that you arise and shine only when your light comes the light is available to everyone 
but those who are interested in accessing it and complying with the conditions and the terms. If you're with me, say Amen. amen. What right have you? You are making a boastful statement whereas you are seeing what is happening in this nation and you dare have the gods to say it's your year of trial. What right? You're watching kidnapping and assassination happening. You're watching, you're watching people being poisoned. Just air killing people. You can't sue the air to court. You're watching demons sit on people's destinies. You hear people tell you they went to bed. And look at the testimony of, of that dear lady. Went to bed and woke up with physical marks. Not spiritual marks. Physical marks on her body. Question. What, what stops you from being a victim? I want to ask you a question. What if as you are sitting down right now, somebody is chanting your name in the shrine? You can't stop them from saying it. But the question I have is, what right do you have to say I will not be a victim of it? What rights do you have to claim that you will prosper? I'm doing business. It's a joke. It's a big joke. I have an uncle who is rich. Another big joke. The mystery of exemption. Job 22, verse 19. I'm a student of the Bible. I love the Bible. I don't read the Bible to feel spiritual. I am very serious about my work with God and my study of Scripture. I have found it to be the most reliable book. I've read many books in my life. It's so disappointing to know many of them are useless to my destiny. And now that I've found the one that is useful, he said, I found your word and I did eat it. Right? And it became a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. 29, not 19. Job 22, 29. I want to share with you a few things from the depth of my heart that can exempt men. Go ahead and prophesy to yourself as you read this scripture. Want to read. When men like they are saying now across the nations of the earth when men like they are saying now across the continent of africa in nigeria even in this city when men are cast down the bible didn't say they say they are cast they are not confessed it is their reality when men are cast down something you will engage will bring you to a point where for you there will be a lifting up a difference an exemption a separation write this down please everyone it's important to come to the lord's house not just with a bible please always have a bible but always have a good material to write or whatever device you're using but make it serious when you take god seriously he will surprise you when you play games with god and make him look like one of those many things in your life then you will not get results so I'm challenging all of us online, those outside, doesn't matter. When you are coming to the house of God, go as though you are going to be mentored, taught, trained, built, equipped. Don't go as if you are going to a museum to watch, watch artifacts or watch a zoo to watch animals. No, you are going for a life-changing encounter. Are we together? So exemption, write this down. Exemption from evil. Exemption from defeat is a provision in the kingdom that can be accessed. Exemption from all of those things I mentioned is a provision in the kingdom that can be accessed. 
That means it is within the power of God to cause men to experience exemption. But like everything in the kingdom as we have been taught here everything in the kingdom including salvation the cheapest expression of god's grace and love there will always be a condition attached please train yourself into an understanding that every time you desire something in god know that there is a condition attached your condition is a demonstration fulfilling that condition is a demonstration of your trust in god and your authorization to commit him to deliver the results expected without condition there is no guarantee whether you are interested in what god is saying watch this if i drop a piece of cake on this table right and I don't give you a condition to pick it. How else can I gauge and test whether you are interested? I drop it here and say, if anyone is interested, come and pick it. Your coming to pick it is a demonstration to me that you are interested. Are we together? You will find people who will not come. I don't have to be angry with them. They are only sending a message to me that I'm not ready to eat cake. The same way other people are sending messages, I don't want to prosper. I don't want to rise. I don't want to walk in the anointing. I do not want to walk in the fullness of the reality and the possibilities contained in God. Obedience commits God. Obedience. Not to what you want. You can't set rules and obey it. You obey the conditions prescribed by God. You can obey the conditions prescribed by a man and still fail. You must obey the conditions prescribed by God. Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says, God who in sundry times and in diverse manners spake to us through the prophets had in these last days spoken to us through his son. Son. God who in sundry times and diverse manners he spake to us through different people. But in these last days, among many other things, his chiefest means of communication is his son, the word, that he has appointed to be heir over all things. So it is important to trust the word of God. Don't just believe it. Trust the word of God and respect the word of God. Say Amen. There are conditions. That if you and I keep, we will render the devil helpless and we will find out that we can walk in the reality of triumph. Not as a cliche, but an experience that will cause many to wonder and see the hand of God and then give him glory. And I want to share with you two deep kingdom mysteries that are responsible for compelling triumph. Number one is what I call the mystery of putting God first. Matthew 6, 33. The God first principle. You can write it like that. God dash first principle. The God first principle. Matthew chapter 6. Let's start from verse 31, if you will, media. 31. Let's look at 31. God first principle. Wherefore, take no thought. Other versions say, don't worry. Saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? 32. For after these things, these things, what to eat? what to wear the house you will get the car you will get listen carefully the children you will have etc your career whatever he says after these things do the heathen the gentiles seek notice the bible never said they get it he said after these things they seek it didn't say after these things they get it's a cause to seek those things because number one, seeking them will never give them to you. That's not how to get them. 
The Gentiles are getting it wrong. They are playing by a wrong formula. They seek those things and they never get them. It looks like they get them. But then you look at what else is taken from their life and it doesn't add up to nothing. Are we together? Then it says, for your heavenly father. Your earthly father usually will forget that you need these things. So God was comforting you. There are many fathers in your life. But the surest one, the dependent, your heavenly father knows. That ye have need of all these things. 33. But seek first. Everybody say seek first. It didn't say seek together. Seek. What does it mean to seek first? If I organize a speech and price, Sam, get ready to stand up. And I say, Sam, you took first. Come out. Do you join him? He comes out alone. Topmost. Preferred. So the Bible says, among the many things, go back to your seat. Among the many things in your life, I want to marry, I want a job, I want my enemy to die, I, my, I must buy a car, this duplex is mine, I must possess it, I must receive a miracle alert. I'm not saying those things are wrong. It says among them, come, seek. Seek. Isolate God out of the group, bring him out and pursue him. Listen carefully. I'm showing you a very deep mystery. Let me tell you what many of us are doing. We are seeking together. So we say, God, come. Child, come. Civil service, where is he? Come. We gather them like this and say, God, just hold my hand. But Jesus said, my burden is easy and my yoke. You see that? And so God says, where do I stand here? He said, just be be blessed that you are in my life. And God says, no, my jealousy cannot allow me fight with rent. Fight with whatever. You are so obsessed about getting land, you will miss a service thinking about land. You will never get it. That's the secret to high blood pressure. Are you listening to me now? It is the secret to all this frustration that people drive themselves and fall inside a, a gutter and not even know. There are so many things in your life. Then it says, seek first. Give us that scripture again. The kingdom. Seek first. The influence. The sovereignty. Make God first in your life. And his righteousness. The word righteousness there is not just the one imputed by faith. Understand his systems. Amplified says his way of doing things. So if you seek the kingdom alone, your obedience is still not complete. He said rather than looking for money, seek to understand principles. Seek God. When you find him and his kingdom, pay attention. While others are running trying to look for money, while others are running trying to look for breakthrough, he said, stay with God and understand his systems. What is your reward? How many of these things will come? This is Jesus talking. Please tell me how many. Oh, he didn't say some. Then you now use the money you have and get the rest. He said, if you seek God, isolate God and seek him. And stay with his word. Learning the systems of the kingdom. Not just religiosity. Bible study just to cram scriptures understanding the systems of the kingdom it leaves you with a guarantee one guarantee that all these things remember the these things of verse 32 what to eat will run after you what to drink will run after you the cars the houses the children instead of flying from pillar to post finding out and saying look look i have to do something i'm tired of being buried the bible says seek the kingdom and when you begin to study the systems of the kingdom you will find a mystery that is responsible for fruitfulness it says and when you have found it it shall be a joy and a rejoicing to you do you know why many believers never rise up it's not that we don't read the bible believe me 
we don't we are not interested in understanding the systems of the kingdom there are many pastors looking for crowd looking for membership yet they will not understand the mystery of growth from the word of god they just they, they run around how are you doing it you how are you doing it like a charm like a genie no sit down there is no man who wanting to to build a tower the bible says who first sit down you know life makes it look like the moment you sit down you are being delayed you you, you get it now so people can come and meet you and say oh god till now you are not working every day you are just searching scriptures look at the foolish person who is talking to you ask him how much is his salary combined you are about to get it now the bible assures you to be added i'm not saying getting a job is wrong but you are settling down no i'm not just interested in a job i'm interested in favor why have i graduated three years and no job because of that i would not just study on a job i will study on favor i'm seeking the kingdom other people are running around and sweating watching football and you are there saying lord how how is it that men rise with favor huh ruth came with her mother mother-in-law and just went to a land with nothing and within 24 hours they left provision for her boaz said leave it as you clean some you think it's just because boaz liked her there was a mystery a woman who was even begging her mother to give birth to other children and she will wait her desire of maybe 25 30 years was answered in 24 hours and you are searching while you are searching your passion is attracting the holy spirit don't think you will just come foolishly because you no 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 the holy spirit responds to passion and hunger he will watch you reading it like a storybook first that's why you will not see revelation and you say i will not be discouraged i have to find this what happened to abimelech that made him carry gifts and just gave abraham he wanted to carry abraham's wife an angel showed up and said, "If you you would you are dead. He didn't say you would die. You touch this woman, you are dead. So as a husband, you are now afraid whether they will kidnap your wife, and you go back to scripture and say, instead of running around policing my wife like a fool, let me find out what is the mystery. A kidnapper is coming, and that same angel will say, I've been here for a long time. You touch this woman, don't say." is happening to others you don't know what they believed you define your reality by what you believe i keep saying it is when we will go to heaven that god will show me how many goats were slaughtered because of me how many rams were dragged to another house how many bottles only god my picture is everywhere somebody will download it and shoot that picture till he injures himself when you surround your life with mysteries you will laugh you will laugh and laugh and laugh at a foolish devil you are everything everything is you you are everything everything is you one more time sing it on you a system the economy of the devil is such that he is obsessed do you know if you work for satan you will still not be idle satan is the master of occupying people with things the only difference is that they are useless antichrist and they have no bearing in terms of producing results the devil will occupy you with issues that will stop you from paying attention but hear what jesus tells martha he said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and obsessed about many things. But one thing, how many things? One thing is needful to sit at the master's feet. Not to sit down and worry. You must be listening and you must be understanding. You know, let me share with you a little testimony. 
I hardly talk about all these kinds of things. I remember years ago when God was starting out with us. That time, Zaria was not the way it is now. That time there were so many people. Pastors, reverends, apostles, prophets. I mean, everybody was called. It was, it was, Zaria was on fire. Everybody was doing something. I remember clearly there were some gentlemen who would come and meet me and say, man of God, why are you always sitting like this? You are always writing, studying the Bible. One even offered to sponsor a, a radio program for me. He said, no, at your level, I mean, you are supposed to organize healing meetings, organize this, and, and I laughed. You know what I was doing? I was searching the mysteries of the kingdom. I didn't want to gather people and be a fool and waste their time and now be resentful at those having results. I knew it would take time. Brothers and sisters, ask those who knew me then. I spent my life studying scripture. I could sit down a whole day just searching the mysteries. You see, this hurry, hurry in life is a very bad thing. God is a God of speed, but He does not rush people. He teaches you the precepts. Do you know, I say it with all humility, over 90% of those people, today, they are not even in ministry. They were passionate about fame. My God, passionate about PAs, passionate about briefcase and suit. The few times I spent with them irritated me. You sat down with them in 10 minutes, they were talking about their suit. I couldn't afford it. I could afford to study the word. So I stayed on what I could afford. God made it cheap enough for me to stay there. There were so many people, just the, all this fake and false life. Oh, my shoe is this, my that, and I just ignored them with all their nonsense. And I'm glad I did. Just like some of you now, while others are running, God is saying, sit down. You are saying, God, for how long? God is saying, if you knew where I'm taking you, you will start rejoicing. Because one step in knowledge will cover up 10 years of foolishness. 10 years of wallowing in trouble. You know, this money thing, God has said it's a year of wealth. Listen carefully to me. Most people believe that God cannot bless them. They really do. That's why they don't listen to him. If you were having a job, Sam, and you were paid, let's say 100,000, how much is that in one year? Please help me. One point. Assuming nothing changes in 10 years, how, I was going to say how old is that? How, how much is that? 12 million. Because of 12 million, you rubbish your 10 years rubbish your 10 years fighting quarreling hating and living foolishly whereas god is saying if you will pay attention to me i can do something to you and bring your 10 years to six months to two months to one month to one week and many of you are god don't just leave me i know what i'm doing you know for many people the apex of fulfillment is when they get a job just so, I mean, what, when you are talking like this, oh, please get out. I have a job, a good job. What is a good job? What is your definition of a good job when you are employed? My definition of a good job is a good job that I have absolute control of. If I cannot control it, it's not a good job because somebody's wickedness can affect me. Correct? I'm not saying get a job is bad. No, no, no. We prophesy jobs here. There are many disciplined, diligent, employed people. Don't be lazy and think I'm endorsing you. I'm about to attack you from the other side. You know me. I will have to balance it. Don't think it's not an endorsement for irresponsibility for whatever reason. But I'm, I'm showing you the vanity of trusting in things. These are the things that destroy us. To an extent that they now give somebody a job. Every, the devil does it in such a way that every day you go to church or fellowship that's the day you will be needed most that's a useless and nonsense job i repeat that is a useless and what nonsense job the job that has to make you leave god to do it is a stupid job if you are involved leave it now let men insult me no problem leave it 
listen. I've worked with God small. He's reliable. Listen to what I'm telling you. Are we together now? That's why they get angry when God blesses people. Because they come and say, ah, ah, Pastor Alpha, Papa, what happened? Three cars, two duplexes. Then the painful part is he didn't build any of them. Say, no, this, this is, I mean, I'm, no, I can't, I don't like this guy. Whether you like it or not, it's a mystery. Everybody say mystery. That's why I call it a mystery. A mystery of exemption. That where others have to do a lot of things. I've said it, listen, if you're a businessman here, listen to me. And don't think I'm daft as I speak. Stop wasting your time to save money to buy land. In the kingdom, you don't buy land to save it. You provoke favor. Listen, I know what I'm saying. If, well, God bless you, you can, you can save and God will honor it. I will even pray on it. But you, are, you will be ready for frustration. Satan that I know will cause something you must eat out of that money. No matter how disciplined you are. When you are pushed to the wall, you must withdraw something. You don't get land. You don't get properties by saving. Psalm 44 verse 3. Give it to us please. Read that scripture and never forget. It's just a digression and I'll get back to our subject of discussion and we'll pray. I want us to pray tonight. Help us please. Psalm 44 verse 3. You are a Christian. Please read it with all your heart. One, two, read. Uh Uh-huh. So how did they get the land? Now, teach somebody this thing and watch him insult you. And say, you and that, your stupid man of God in Koinonia. You people should continue this nonsense, you will beg for bread. Beg for bread. See, I'm teaching, what I'm teaching some of you is very hard. Even you, you are trying to believe it, but what they have told you, you are now wondering, I hope it will work. It's like leaving a rope. You are about to fall and I'm saying, leave that rope and just come. And you are saying, show me the, the quota and I'm saying, just leave it. If it be thou, bid me come. What I'm sharing, many of you, I can't, you, you see, I'm a spiritual man. I receive a spiritual feedback. I see how many of you are struggling to believe and agree with what I'm saying. It's not like you want to doubt it, but you are saying, ah, apostle is hard though. Some are foolishly saying it's because you are a man of God, you are enjoying. Was I born a man of God? You, you join the junk that journalists carry and talk about people and say you are enjoying. People give you tithes and give you offering. No. I'm showing you how to be happy. That's how to be happy. That you can carry your wife and be happy. You can see Jimmy and his wife. You can see Ogasho and Shade. There are happy people. You can see Aaron, several Pastor Alpha. There are other angry people. You see them and their wife and stress. That guy is 35. But even you, you would, you would think that he is maybe 50. Life. Life squeezed him. Disobedience added his weight on top. And the devil sat on it. That's his destiny. Don't laugh. Take very seriously what I'm telling you. There are people, you see them with their wives happy, giving God glory. Giving God praise. Because they are, they, are, they are accessing the mysteries of the kingdom. They know what to do with their children. They know what to do with the enemy. Kai, may you know what to do. It's a disaster to be confronted with something you do not know what to do. The Bible says, but he himself, Jesus now, knew what to do. Look at the brother that shared the testimony. The one who trekked from um, uh, the police station or somewhere. Now, you see, can you see that in spite of the trekking, he now climbed a bike and the devil wanted to kill him? It's not fear. It's a mystery. Listen, when you trust God, you commit Him. Let me tell you something about believing God. Watch this. If this is the door. Watch this. This is a big revelation for someone. Call this place I'm standing. 
the door to your destiny. Are we together? If you turn around following this door with total sincerity, believing that it is God that is leading you, God will remove this door and keep it here to make sure you don't miss it. Let this be a deep word of comfort to somebody. Stop being afraid. Who said he must remain there? He said, I am the door. When he moves, the door moves. So listen, listen. That's why God protected that brother and brought him to hear the word. The devil may have planned. God does not give men doors. He's the door. Once you are following him, I tell you in your sincerity, even in your error, he will still say, I am the door. Pass. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Hold on. When you see God doing the great things that he's doing through my life and through many great men, it's not because we got his instructions 100%. Is because our hearts are sincere. So while based on what you saw in a vision, I'm supposed to die, God shifts the door and says, pass. Let the enemies keep prophesying themselves into doom. They were right, but God was God. Did you hear what I said? They were right. Their predictions were correct. I shouldn't have made it, but God is God. Choose which part to follow, right or God. I follow him, oh. I follow him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't walk with God with fear. Since God revealed this to me, I, mean, I live a very happy life. To hell with Satan. I live a very happy life. My heart for God is the chief requirement. He will take me to the place of destiny. If this is the path God earmarked for me, and I follow this path, but with a heart of sincerity, knowing that I seek God, my sincerity puts pressure on his reputation. He will change that destiny and carry it and bring it here. Believe me, I have worked with him. That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. That's the reason why when a man gives you prophecy, it's still not the highest thing. You can change it. He's speaking based on what he saw. But there is something between you and God that can change it. Have you not heard that there were people who somebody saw, a doctor saw, that woman had lost a child. They saw this guy had lost um, whatever. And the man would look and say, it is true. I'm seeing blood. You have lost the child. But I bring a sincerity between me and God. And after nine months, a child comes out. Where did it come out from? I am the door. Door means access. The door to everything. Don't let men fool you. And make it look like you have missed it. You have missed it. You hear people make that arrogant statement. You have missed it. Miss what? God? My God? You are joking. He will navigate that door. Hear what I'm telling you. This is why restoration is possible. He can take it and turn the direction and bring it. Listen, he is God. He does not submit to any man. You be God, you know, be man. No. You be God, you know, be man. No. Alpha and Omega, you be God. You be God, oh. you be God. Oh. Sing it one more time. tell you a big secret the key is not perfection the key is sincerity learn this it's not hearing God 100% that guarantees your victory it's the sincerity of your heart are you hearing what I'm teaching you tonight God first you touch a man addicted to God you are in trouble I'm telling you you touch a man that has carried himself and said, God, I belong to you. 
I seek you first. When you seek other things and leave God behind, you authorize darkness to tear down your life. When you say it, people think you are stupid. They think it's just a talk for preachers. No, sir. God first. God always. And you are free. The first key to exemption, hear me, is when God occupies every space in your life. You will watch trouble come before you like this and pass you as if you are a spirit. God first. It's not about koinonia. It's not about being a civil servant or a businessman. There are many foolish career people who threw God away. They loved God while they were on campus. The moment they graduated, they became too matured for God. They threw him away and said, now we have, we have become, you know, I read, I read engineering, I read maths, I read, I read whatever it is. Lower levels of knowledge. They throw God, they throw his word, they throw everything. You never find them talking about God. They are even embarrassed. You come to their house, you mention God, you say you have come with this God, God thing. Pastor, run away from such kind of people. Koinonia, hear me. I love you too much. I'm training you to become a wonder. Run away from anybody who does not prioritize God. I don't care whether he's a politician, whether he's a businessman. If it's your husband or wife, you have a work to do. Start interceding seriously. Do you know, when people come and meet me and they say they are ready to marry, even if you hold hamper for me, it's a joke. Do you love God? Are you serious? You don't bribe me with wine and hamper. I'm not an idiot. Do you love God? Because when all else fail, that one thing will bring you back. Job lost everything. And the one thing left, the wife said, leave it all. Job said, yeah, leave God again. I lost everything. And you are now saying I should leave God. Why do you speak like one of these foolish women? And God had him. In pain, I hold on to you. Oh, I lost my job, but Lord, I hold on to you. How can I lose you? Are we together? My finances crashed, but I hold on to you. God first. The marriage didn't work out. Still God first. The miscarriage happened. God first. I thought I would not need to go for a surgery, but I went for a surgery. God first. Everybody shout God first. Before that brother, God first. Before that sister, let the brother come and meet you loving God. Don't move around and be saying I'm 30 years. Keep quiet. God first. Don't sit down moving around and say, why wouldn't I get a job? Let the job come and meet you with God inseparable how can i leave him what will be my reason that he's not faithful i never see anyone like you i never see anyone like you hey i never see anyone like you i never see please help me find my god i never see i never see anyone like you i never see i never see anyone like you sit down do you know some of you are looking at me strange as you rise and you see many cheap victories you will know why we praise god we gave an instruction here hold on that people should dance their way to the next level there were too many big people big ceos arrogant people who felt too big why, why will i make myself a small child please this koinonia you make people look stupid the kingdom is for children when you become too big for the kingdom you are too big for breakthrough too big for what you think i like dancing have you ever seen me dance do you think i like dancing But at his word, you become foolish enough to step into that realm. Are we together? God first. That you vow a vow tonight and say, Lord, listen, brothers and sisters. You know, every time I come here, I watch these little children and their parents. 
I see how many wrong things they do in 10 minutes. And I see how their parents go. I hear Ejimi calling his child. The wife is there. Everybody doing all they are doing. And I'm saying, that's it. That's the message. God first. They don't run to me. They run to their parents. God first. We hate God. That's why we run to Him last. We claim we love Him. The moment people are in trouble, you run to your strongest point of deliverance, which is your uncle. And you ran and he told you the money has not come yet. You insulted him and left angrily. You went to another auntie to an extent that you went to a stranger on the road and said, Sir, if I die now, is it fair? And God, hold on. God is watching. We pray in tongues. We roll around. Are, are, are you hearing what I'm saying? We cry. We do a lot of emotional things. But in the midst of real life situations, let me tell you, God is my witness. You are spiritual people. Listen. The, every issue of my life, my first point of reference is God. I have convinced myself that whatever God cannot do in my life cannot be done. Now. Are we together? Yeah. The moment there is trouble, and you are calling apostle, it doesn't work. You call prayer department leaders, it doesn't work. Call a Jimmy, it doesn't work. Call pastor, have a call. They are wicked. No. God is with you in the room there. You don't believe it and you are not even interested. How many people go and sit down in the offices of men from morning till evening? They sit by seven till ten. Then the man just comes and says, I'm tired. Can you come? Ah, yes, yes, no problem. How can I be angry? Because you think that the man can wipe your tears. And you spend ten minutes in the presence of God. You are grumbling around and talking nonsense. Oh God, you are my. You now see why I sing that song? And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Listen, do you know, brothers and sisters? If not for God, the troubles I would have entered, the fulfillment of the prophecies of the enemy, Koinonia would have crashed, crashed like a plane, but for God. But for God. You will keep watching this ministry rise mysteriously like an edifice. It's not because of perfection. It's because of God. When you know this, you will be outspoken about God. You think your business will rise because you have capital. And so you will keep struggling with it there. Another ignorant person who respects God will come from nowhere and rise. That's why you see, when, listen, listen carefully. When men are clapping and saying, ah, apostle did this, I thank God for it all. But me and God, we, we, we know. Take God out of my life. I'm as useless as this table you are seeing in the presence of anyone. I'm not ashamed of it. I say it everywhere. Because every time I declare him, I bring joy to his heart. And he says, son, you are sitting down on so much power, yet you are telling men it's not you. Most of you will not do it. Let me tell you, there are many of you here looking at me. If you carry one-tenth of the kind of anointing God has put in my heart, People will worship you. You will put your name on your shoe. You will pay. by now they would have made rapper with my face. By now you would have done everything, but for him, how can I dare claim that I am responsible for this result? Will I be honest? I may deceive you, and you will believe me. But I know. Listen, after great meetings like this, when I go back home, I have my small chair. I just kneel down. And sometimes you just see me hold the chair and I'm just laughing. I say, "Kai God, boy, you said, look at how these people are clapping. Sometimes the seeds that they sow into my life, I wait till this my boys that are working for me, when they go home, I scatter it on the ground and I keep looking at it. I say, but God, you know this thing doesn't belong to me, Abby. It really belongs to you. Why would somebody work and you pay someone else? And God says, it's yours. That's your price for believing me. God first. Who deceived you that God is only for preachers? 
who deceived you that God is only for pastor's wives. Please hear me. There are people here, inside, outside, online. You are not determined to be passionate about God. They ask you, you say, me, I, I take my things easy. I don't overdo anything. You better overdo when it comes to God. Because life will so crush you into pieces. Life is spiritual. When I worship God, I make sure Satan sees me. Worshiping God is a love affair. And he's not invited. He's absolutely not invited. I sing this song not because it's a special number. It's a revelation to me. He is my God. The way hope can hold a husband and say my husband. You don't claim what is not your own. This water is my own. Right? The welfare gave me. If you come to touch it now, I'll say you are a, you are a word. What are you? Thief. Thief. There is a name for that. When you claim he is your God, you prove it through your intimacy. It's not talk. What right have you to stand and say let the power of God move? What right have you? You know, most people think it's just by talking. Now the power of God will move, move, move. You are, you are a big joker. Not with God. Not with God. You must have a track record. Not of perfection of passion believe me if you do not have passion for god forget about doing business with god in this kingdom i want to ask you a question when was the last time you took a day off to spend time with god don't tell me you love him let's examine it you see why it is better for some people to not get jobs because god is having their attention now that they are idle they can spend time but the moment they get up, they are now in a hurry, making money, hurry, making whatever. And then the times that they now have to spend with God, the devil now occupies them with something else. Don't look for what only God can give. It's not missing. Stay with the door, the one who has it, and he will give. Many preachers come to me and they say, man of God, I want grace. I want to see results in my ministry. And I look at them, I say, so what do you expect to happen? And they just bring out of a bag, you see like four or five different anointing oils. And I'm not against it. They bring it and say, man of God, just breathe on it. I will carry it back. And I look at the person and laugh. I almost want to tell them, get out of here. They are joking. You breathe a relationship? Is that how you grow your relationship? Time. Intimacy. Spend time with God. No. Spend time with men, yes. Spend time with liars and psychophants who will clap for you now and betray you. And betray you. Unreliable as they are. They will clap for you as if they love you. As soon as you turn, they will stab you. Listen, I stop trusting men's sins. Men are as unreliable as the devil. I trust God. So it doesn't matter what men, what they do to me. Everybody say God first. Say God first. Bless you. Let's look at the second part very quickly. Our time is gone. The second mystery that commands exemption, aside from putting God first in everything, is the mystery of kingdom service. Write it down. The mystery of kingdom service. I'm going to be very fast. Please write it and we'll pray. Kingdom service is promoting the interest and the purposes of God on earth. Promoting the interest and the purposes of God on earth. It's an extension of your love and your passion for God. Kingdom service. What is kingdom service? Serving God for a living. Serving God for a living. Kingdom service is not just cleaning chairs. No, no, no. Serving God for a living. There are three dimensions to kingdom service. Maybe we'll just touch one. And then next week we can take the other one. I wanted us to finish because we'll start a series. Let's see how God will help us. Number one. The first proof or the first index to measure your kingdom service is soul winning 
and establishment. Soul winning and soul establishment. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. Soul winning and soul establishment. Brothers and sisters, it's a jackpot of breakthrough. Look at me. Anybody who tells you working for God does not pay is lying to you. And they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn how many? Many to righteousness. They shall be as the stars. That's their reward for turning many to righteousness. Soul winning is not for evangelists. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. Please give it to us quickly. Proverbs 11 verse 30. Soul winning as a demonstration of your service to the kingdom. It says, and the fruit of the righteous is as a tree of life. And he that winneth souls, very clearly, he that winneth souls is what? Wise. And the Bible speaking about wisdom says, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Long lasting riches. Not ten years and you are down forever. Wisdom. Wisdom. That when you win souls, it is a service to the kingdom that compels God to bless you. Second Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 18 to 20. Very interesting scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 5, quickly please, verse 18 to 20. The Bible tells us that God has given us both the ministry and the word of reconciliation. Two things. Both the ministry and all things are of God who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given us, what's the first thing? It's an assignment. He didn't give pastors. He gave all men the ministry of reconciliation. Next verse. To wit. That God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and had committed unto us, what? The word. He didn't just give you the ministry. He gave you the word. What to say. How to get men saved. Not just the passion and the assignment, but the ministry and the word. Look at me. One of the biggest secrets to the growth of any flourishing ministry is soul winning not revelation i don't care how deep that ministry is a ministry that trivializes soul winning will never grow go and search your bible search modern history search today i say it without any sense of shame find out a ministry no matter how deep they are in the things of god healing deliverance prophecy revelation whatever if soul winning is not an outspoken priority, you never will find God trusting them with people. Most people think soul winning is a basic thing in Christianity. It's for people who don't have anything else to offer. Is that true? What Jesus died for? Everybody says soul winning. There are some of you who can win souls and win your way out of every trouble. You watch people who have not turned to righteousness. You watch people, you are coming for koinonia, you move around and you watch lives and destinies languishing and going to hell. And it doesn't bother you because you feel apostle will come and do it. Your passion for souls. There are people here who God has lifted in strange ways. They make it as a point of contact to both win souls and draw them to the house of God where they will be saved. Shortly I'm going to make an altar call. And almost everyone who will come out here was invited by somebody. You have won a soul. Let me tell you, every time you bring a soul to God, as he's getting born again, start clapping. It's like taking a check to a bank. While you are clapping for his eternal salvation, clap for yourself too. Because the devil is watching.
you have saved the soul and authorized yourself for exemption. A woman can win her way out of barrenness. That you sit down and say, Satan, you claim you will not give me a child. I need three children. I will win five souls for every child. And you go out and you win five and say, that's my firstborn. Let's see the devil that will stop your womb from taking it. If you don't have womb, the baby will grow anywhere. After all, germs grow anywhere. Fibroid grows anywhere. Growth grow anywhere. It doesn't matter where the baby grows. The most important thing is that he comes out after nine months. Are we together? Koinonia is heavily protected among other things by the mystery of soul winning. I have passion, genuine passion for souls. Not fake that pastors just do and cry. Genuine passion for souls. You are talking to somebody, he says, somebody else has, talk, has spoken to me, say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That somebody spoke to you does not mean you were born again. I'm still talking to you. Koinonia, hear me. I challenge you. Begin a serious project of soul winning. Instead of gossiping on Facebook. Discussing matters of people that are not your business. Writing things about men of God. Somebody, I was, I was, I was shown somebody who tried to write a, a, some things about me. Thinking he knows me. And I said, look at you see these foolish people. He would have used that time and that unit to win a soul. Do you know the joy in the heart of the father? When one person comes to stand before Jesus. Listen, every time we pray for crowd, God sees my heart. It is never for a name. It is never to build an empire. I'm smart enough to know how to be famous. I'm intelligent enough to be able to write books. Souls. Souls. That when you win souls, it's on your record. The Bible says there is joy in heaven. Since you got born again, let me tell you, it's a shame as a believer. If right from the beginning of this year till now, you have not contributed in anyone's coming to the kingdom. It's a shame. You are doing the same thing an irresponsible man does to not bring food to a house. The same way we say a man is stupid for not bringing food to his house. Imagine a man married and comes home empty-handed and the wife is saying, honey, where's the food? Say, food for what? That's exactly what someone does if he doesn't win souls. You watch people go to hell. The primary assignment God has given me is not just to build and equip believers. You have to save them first before they are established. Facebook, text messages, you can find a way of reaching a soul genuinely don't just say i think he's saved and talk to him and say well you see you have to be serious with god think about it then you go back smiling you didn't save him you only informed him that his life is not going well it's a different thing if he rejects but give people a chance preach to your parents preach to your loved ones you see how we celebrate so winning here many of you when people give testimonies of cars i got a car I got a plane. You clap. But they say someone got born again. Somebody just knows. Oh, that's all right. Let's hear the real testimony. Which one is the real one? The car that will perish? Have you not grown spiritually enough to know how the, the mundanity and the vanity of the things of this life? That's why we pray for souls. That's why as much as possible, as much as God grants us grace, we keep making altar calls. Even if nobody comes, let there be a witness in heaven. Are we together? Some of you, that's what you did that God lifted you. That's how this ministry started. We would pray for people those times before they got admission. When people came, that was before they started post-UME. I remember, as soon as people come, we are like holding them. And the next thing they get born again, they get filled with the Holy Spirit and we create room for them to be established. If you heal men and don't save them, they are going to hell. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? If, you give, if I give you money and you are not saved, where are you going to? Don't say heaven. Don't let anyone lie to you, you are going to heaven. You, are, you don't have Jesus in your heart.
please don't let any theologian deceive you you are going straight to hell say hell there is a real place like that people left this morning they are there right now don't let people fool you and make it look as if the moment you are a nice person you go to heaven being nice does not take people to heaven if you cannot live your lifetime you deserve to go to hell if you live your lifetime without acknowledging the one who brought you you spent 70 years of your life and paid no attention to god this night i want to challenge you your phone is full of many names that are not born again you are looking at them and you are watching them god has given you access and influence over their lives many of our loved ones are on their way to hell we know it we know they are on their way to hell our roommates are on their way to hell our work people are on their way to hell our friends your husband is on his way to hell your wife some of our stubborn children are on their way to hell you can start interceding don't say any man cannot be saved that's the talk of the devil i have seen impossible people get saved there's nobody I, I, I don't believe that can be saved. Do you pray for souls? Or do you pray for money? Some of you are surprised. We are supposed to be talking about wealth. I'm showing you a jackpot of financial prosperity. God is not a, a, a journey that you crack like a charm. Souls. For as long as there is breath in me, I will keep leading people to Jesus preacher or no preacher i will make sure they love him i will make sure they love him stop discussing other things with people and don't probe their salvation people come to you and say we want to marry you talk about every other thing there is a way you can discern oh this guy is saved but there's a way you know this brother is not saved and he's about to marry a lady he's inviting satan officially to be the lord of that home you have to save it. You are not just saving a man. You are saving every child that will come. You know, believers, don't be too western to be obedient. Take the foolishness of the word of God and be serious. On Tuesday, you are coming for prayer department. Prayer band meeting. It's the only department that allows other people to join them. You come alone. You live and you are going. And you know that somebody... So he, he may not be born again dear but it can be a starting point it takes a while to save souls you may not save them overnight but start introducing them to the atmosphere of God's presence the same way some of you now introduce someone here doesn't matter what religion doesn't matter what age doesn't matter what rest, what, what race I have little respect for any man of God that does not pay attention to the simplicity of soul winning I don't care what you have the greatest people when all is said and done he that winneth souls is wise you have no authorization to prosper and to ex be exempted from the the ills and the perils that will keep languishing men when you are not a soul winner are you blessed we'll stop here next week we'll take on the others but listen to me very carefully tonight one of the many prayers you'll be praying is to cry for grace to have a personal revelation of soul winning i don't want you to just get emotional over what i'm saying you don't have to get tracks and move around it is your lifestyle huh there are certain businesses that in nigeria when the businesses came out People were too grateful to keep quiet. They ran to people by themselves. Have you heard about this? Ah, my life is changing. And the person said, I'm not listening. You must listen. I'm not going anywhere. I love you too much to leave you. That's the same way. That's the same way you talk to somebody. Are we together? The person is laughing and says, See, you and this, your God team. We did it before. We did this God team before and tell him you need to go back. God is not a project that you do before and leave. Many of the people you preach to will tell you they were once saved. There was no follow-up system 
and no structure for establishment so when the cares of life came upon them in anger if god was god why did he allow my wife die if god was god why did he allow me to fail if god was god why did he allow me to do this i left god since and they said explain the gospel to them let them know that there is a difference between an encounter with god and understanding his principles many people think the moment i come to jesus christ everything will change and be careful how you win souls the basis of winning souls is not just to prosper them it's a submission it's a covenant of surrender and submission when two people are getting married they ask them serious questions will you be there for one another whether things go well or not they answer yes to everything and they mean it don't don't lie to people of course in christ you have access to these things but train people to love god more than things and situations don't don't make people think immediately i run to god everything will change and then an attack starts on account of their decision and they no longer can stand there are many people who have been of other religions here some of them are here listening to me they have made bold decisions for jesus and some of them we have had to come in even as a ministry to shield and help them because they they have gone and some are still going through heavy pain they deserted them financially left them for whatever reason but because they were saved well they were saved to love and live for jesus i love you jesus i worship and adore you i just want to tell you that i love you more than anything before i make an altar call while everybody is seated i want you to cry pray while you are seated cry to god with every passion in you and say lord i am sorry for ignoring souls i've been trying to do ministry and i've watched people go to hell there are people who if i had spoken to them last week last month pray lord you gave me an anointing i've been joking with it just throwing people on the floor and not paying attention to their salvation you gave me a ministry i've been playing games with it watching people look warm and unserious with god brothers and sisters let's be sincere with ourselves that's not how we started that's not how we started with god we started with the simplicity of passion for souls pray talk to god they call you pastor's wife and you were ashamed and you stopped They insulted you and embarrassed you and you were ashamed then you stopped outside are you praying Lord fresh passion to engage the mysteries that will exempt me from trouble from the grip of witchcraft from destruction That my life will cause men to love God. My life will cause men to be on fire. How can I be in an environment? No one is changing. No one is serious. No one's prayer life is rising. No one's word life is growing. Never transfer the message to anybody. You've never bought a Bible for anyone never done anything to contribute to the salvation of anyone you're not acting as a genuine christian believe me brothers and sisters yet you want the anointing yet you want to be invited for crusades do you want the name or do you love god do you want the fame or do you love god do you just want the prestige and the persona or are you genuinely passionate in this place here and now 
Lord, your kingdom reign. Your kingdom reign. In our lives. In our homes. Your kingdom reign. Your kingdom reign. Through my life. Through my life. I let your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign, through my life, through my life, tonight, I let your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign. Above all, above all, your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign, above all, above all. Listen, forget about fame and go for souls and watch the wonder God will do with your life. Forget about complaining for a husband or a wife and go for souls. Forget about the witchcraft in your family. I know you were born with witchcraft. I know there are practicing people who are manipulating your destiny. Leave them alone and go for souls. And let me see the charm that will tie you down. Souls. Don't just pay tight. Don't just sow seeds. Win souls. Win souls. Win souls. You are too big to win souls. You are too big to be exempted. You are too big to turn many to righteousness. You are too big to receive the defense of God against the vicissitudes of life. But apostle, I'm a shy person. That's why there is grace for you. But apostle, I'm not a man of God. The great commission is not for men of God, my friend. Prayer point number two. Lord, every soul appointed to be saved through my life, in the name of Jesus, I begin to seek them and pursue them. Every soul appointed. There is somebody that must escape hell because I am alive. Lord, where are they? Reveal them to me and give me the grace to haunt them. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray, Koinonia. Who have you appointed to be saved through my life? Lord, who have you appointed to be saved through Koinonia? Who have you appointed to be saved, to be serious with God through our teachings? Jesus said, all that you have given me, I have kept, and none is lost, except the son of perdition, that scriptures may be fulfilled. And none is lost, and none is lost. Hallelujah. Before I make the altar call, I want you to take two minutes. Find somebody that is serious, and I want you to intercede for your family members and say I stop them from going to hell Lord they can't go to hell I know as at now my father is not yet a Christian but Lord eternity in hell have mercy pray my brother my husband my wife pray for those who are saved too and are not serious there are people saved but not serious saved but not passionate Save them, O God. We release angels, angels.
house of salvation. Draw them to meetings. Draw them to crusades. Draw them to meetings. We release angels of salvation. Lord, give them dreams. May they have encounters with Jesus in their sleep. May they have an encounter with Jesus in their offices. It's time for their salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are rounding up. We are going to pray for salvation through encounters. That's the strange dimension the Spirit of God is moving right now. Where men by themselves are in a room, all of a sudden they are caught up. An encounter that will rattle every stubbornness. Lift your voice and cry. Lord, we release encounters. This night, dreams. This night, visions. This night, encounters. In the beer parlor, encounters. In public places, encounters. In business board meetings, encounters. While he's preparing to go for armed robbery, encounters on the road, encounters with Jesus. The last prayer point you are going to pray and say lord i have made you first in my life and i'm committed to serving you therefore i invoke exemption upon my life i no longer will cry their cry prophesy it i no longer will go through their pain no glorious exemption from poverty Glorious exemption from sickness. Glorious exemption from failure. Are you praying? May that mystery be activated in my life. May that mystery be activated. Surely they will gather. But by this mystery, they will scatter. They will come in one way. And the Lord will disperse them in seven ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your head. I want to speak to you. I prophesy upon everyone here as you are laying your hands the same way a mark was put by God to Cain and said by this mark you anyone who sees you will leave you in peace he did it to a sinner Cain he put a mark right now in the name of Jesus as you are placing your hand on your head I place a mark of exemption upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. If the devil is looking for men to kill in a car accident, it will not it will be minus you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. When the devil is fermenting trouble to destroy families, cause scandal between husband and wife cause scandal between pastor and whatever in the name of jesus minus you you are exempted in the name of jesus hear me the same way god has exempted this ministry from financial turmoil and recession i pray upon you beginning from this night every time a man is looking for who to favor i command them to find you
your hands. I'm still praying. If there is any mark, just keep your hands. If there is any mark upon anyone's life that brings bad luck, that brings enemies, that brings the wrong people, that brings the wrong situations, the wrong atmospheres, I'm speaking to you right now. That mark is erased forever. Forever, forever. Erased forever. Erased forever. That mark upon your ministry that misrepresents you, that mark upon your life, every sincere thing you want to do, men see it in another way. That's the mark of the devil. Every time you are doing things genuinely, but people keep misunderstanding you. I cancel that mark from your life now. Put down your hands. Keep standing, everybody. There are people here who are going to run out here right now. Please listen carefully. You are here. The wickedness in the world, the reality of hell, the reality of the troubles that come to a life without Christ is not worth it. There are several people in this place right now. Several people in the first and second overflow across the road, online. You have never genuinely made a serious decision for Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean you are a bad person. You've not paid this much attention to the word of God to see the need to be saved. But now you are hearing me and you are saying, man of God, if you will make a call, I will come. Number two, there are those who you are just not serious with God. We don't even know what you can become. Today you are one leg in. Tomorrow you run out. You have to stop playing games with God. And keep your passion steady. Those two groups of people, I want you to run to Jesus now. Our time is up. Please run like you are serious with God. There are many outside, young and old, in the name of Jesus, run to the front. One. Keep coming. Clear the way for those outside. Two. Hey, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Keep coming. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Keep coming. Run to Jesus. Listen, some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. You are standing before the Lord of heaven. The Holy Spirit is ministering to me that there are still about six people outside that he's speaking to. Come out now. Don't struggle with God. The Lord is telling me that there are at least six people outside. He's talking to them, but they are being hardened outside specifically. Make your way. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. You have to stand and be serious. Please don't come out and play games. This is between you and your God. Keep coming quickly. So that you join the prayers. God bless you. Keep coming. If your friend is trying to stop you from coming out, leave your friend and come. This is about your salvation. This is about your destiny. Keep coming. Koinonia is sacrifice of your club. Motivate them. Encourage them. Let them know we are a family that is interested in their salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for the courage. I know it takes courage. Because we live in a foolish generation that ignores God. And laugh and scorn out people who are serious with Him. But I want you to lift your right hand to heaven. 
the one who died for you the one who saved you some of you as you are lifting up your hands you are lifting up a generation because they are in you say this passionately and sincerely you are not reciting a point salvation prayer is not a point it's not a joke say lord jesus say it again lord jesus this night i declare my love my seriousness and my desire to walk with you i repent of the way i have lived my life help me tonight i obtain mercy i declare this night that my life my destiny belongs to you take it use it for your glory i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that i'm a child of god from tonight i move forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted father i stretch my hands towards these people and i pray let this decision be genuine in the name of jesus the grace that saves and the grace that preserves let it be their heritage i separate you from wrong associations i break you free from every grip of the devil that keeps you in one spot i declare that your life begins to move from glory to glory this salvation this genuine acknowledgement remains with you for the rest of your life in the name of jesus christ amen and amen a big congratulations to you i want you to follow the gentleman the lady waving her hands there's a gentleman and a lady they are waving their hands please all of you this way give them your correct details and we'll follow you up very appropriately god bless you all of you this way god bless you god bless you appreciate them koinonia we bless you yours is the kingdom yours is the power the glory for all the ages lift your hands everywhere those following online lift your hands and let's bless him lord we give you praise can you bless him in the spirit bless him in other tongues Libras kadabras kabras shibala kariada. Let your ears hear your mouth worship him. Zebras kala brandi Lord, we give you praise. We magnify you, the God of all flesh. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Quickly lift your voice and ask him for understanding tonight. We're here once again to drink of the fountain of life. This is Bethel, the place of bread. We receive grace to be nourished in the spirit. We receive understanding, illumination, insight, light. For that light shineth in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it. Please pray from the depth of your heart. Lord, I cry for understanding. Thou, O Lord, are the fountain of light. It is in thy light that we see light. Illuminate our path, O God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Prophesy to yourself in one minute. The word of God is producing results in my life. Go ahead and prophesy. The Holy Spirit is at work in me and is causing the world to produce in my life. Are you praying? Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. From heaven above, our God is a sing it out again. Our God, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. Take it two more times from the 
depth of your heart. Our God is an awesome God. understanding tonight we're gathered tonight because we need you we need to learn and we are humble to learn we ask that your word will prevail over our lives prevail over our minds prevail over our circumstances and lord even if you have, as you have declared this is our year of triumph and we triumph on all sides in jesus name i'd like you to hug everyone around you and please be seated god bless you generously greet and hug someone I've said this prophetically that we will all be great and the beautiful part of it is that we'll all know ourselves it will happen the mouth of the Lord has spoken it in the name of Jesus thank you once again I want us to just give all those sitting at the overflows one and two and those online um, we're going to give them a very big round of applause just to appreciate them it takes a lot of sacrifice thank you if i were you outside i'll clap for myself too hallelujah praise the lord and appreciate yourself for being obedient that's how we eat of the fruit of the land hallelujah the mystery of exemption part two the mystery of exemption part two tonight's teaching is very powerful not powerful just because of the dispensing of the word but its ability to produce results in our lives you know through the week as i just spent a little time with god i wrote something down that i would want to read verbatim just the way it came to my spirit i wanted to listen i said many believers have a lot of zeal and passion but their understanding about realities spiritual realities is so small they hardly experience any sustainable growth breakthrough or victory listen carefully many believers have a lot of zeal and passion these were my contemplations during the week but their understanding about spiritual realities is so small they hardly experience any sustainable growth breakthrough or victory and then i wrote this the cure is submitting oneself intensely to teachings that supply useful informations and broaden our comprehension of spiritual things this is what i preferred as the cure for this state of spiritual bankruptcy where on one side a man can have all the zeal required but another side he may not be able to sustain his growth breakthrough and i said the cure is not just to listen but to submit yourself it comes from the word baptizo like a baptism you baptize yourself intensely to teachings that supply useful information and broaden your comprehension of spiritual things and that's what god is helping us to do we've been looking at a number of strategic series that empower us to triumph and um, we took a break last week so that we could take out time to celebrate the easter and the communion the mystery of exemption how real is exemption is there such a reality in the spirit is there a provision in the dealings of god with men where a man can be exempted genesis chapter 4 verse 13 let's start from there tonight media let's work together tonight genesis chapter 4 verse 13 the reality of exemption 
everyone please read we are reading to verse 15 one to read this was hold on this was a situation between Cain and God are we together now Cain having discovered that he killed his brother God pronounced certain judgments upon him and this was the response of Cain one to read and Cain said to the Lord uh -huh, my punishment is greater than I can bear 14 behold thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth and from the face from thy face shall i be hid and i shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth and it shall come to pass this was his fear that everyone that findeth me hold on before we go to 15 everyone that finds me no specific i mean look at this kind of tragedy in a man's life everyone that finds you destroys you and then something happened in verse 15 the first demonstration or the second demonstration outside of the garden of eden where we see a man being exempted 15 read on please and the lord said unto him therefore whosoever slayeth cain vengeance shall be taken on him and the Lord set a mark upon a man he had cursed. This was his request. Reduce my punishment, O oh God. I know I'm already cursed. You have made me by your pronouncement a fugitive and a vagabond. And everyone, that means there was another mark. He said, anyone that sees me will kill me. And the Bible says... And the Lord set a mark upon Cain. Why? Lest any finding him should kill him. Does that mark still exist today? Where God can put upon a person. Lest any sickness finding you will kill you. Lest any catastrophe. Exemption is a reality. You have to believe this. In the economy of God. The aspect and the dimension of kingdom reality you believe is what will become your experience. It is important to listen to men of God, listen to pastors. It is important to be loyal to people. But you are only loyal to them provided they are loyal to the word. If a man is not loyal to the word, I will not listen to him. Because he will peg me around his limitation and present his limitation to be the full portrait of all that there is in God. So believing him in innocence, I will still be bankrupt of certain dimensions of spiritual reality. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Meaning if you find at any point that I'm not interested in developing myself in the knowledge of God, you are authorized to divorce yourself from your loyalty to me. And he set a mark upon him exodus chapter 8 22 and 23 let's give the second scripture tonight and then we'll begin to build exodus i like us to read it we're reading 22 and 23 together one to read and i will severe in that day read on the land of goshen in which my people dwell listen and that no swarms of flies shall be there to the end that thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Last verse. And I will between my people and thy people. And he says tomorrow shall this sign be. Exemption is a sign. A signboard leads somewhere. When I get to a place and I see someone's hair and a clipper upon it, it is a signboard saying there is a barbing saloon close. That means when God exempts you, it's a sign that the hand of God is within the vicinity at work in the life of a man. It says tomorrow shall this sign. What sign? A division. Swarm of flies will come and devour people and their crops and their savings and everything. But I will put a division. Say, Lord, exempt me. Shout it with faith. Lord, exempt me. Exemption is real. It is a reality in the system of God. There are men, there are ministries, there are organizations that are working in the reality of that truth. 
and the goal of this teaching is to help us you cannot boastfully speak of triumph in a year when you are watching things kill people i think it was kenny who was over at my place briefly just for a word and then um he met me having a conversation with ejimi we were discussing something very serious and then he said i think a woman i don't know maybe the woman is here a dear woman of god who lost two children concurrently i think within this vicinity lost a child they went to bury the child before they came back or i think immediately they came back another one died don't ever tell me that's a natural death no sir i know god enough to know witchcraft when i see it are we together and i will put a division a division God, please pay attention to what i'm teaching you i have taught again and let me say this the realities of the kingdom are available in christ but they are accessible through understanding backed up by obedience that's what the bible calls faith faith is not quoting scripture faith is that the journey of faith starts with your understanding and accurate comprehension not just of what god has said the end of understanding is you know your role in the equation if you don't know the part you have to play you have not understood it there are so many people listen carefully there are so many people who want the things god has said but they do not they even have the zeal to obey but they are they are in confusion as to what their roles the role that you have to play obedience is key if you are to experience anything in the kingdom deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says it shall come to pass in that day if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord it says to do and observe all that i command thee to do and observe not discuss and wish not desire and intend to do and observe all that i commanded this day that this blessing shall come upon you overtake you right and all of that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you so many believers are living in an illusion that because god is so mighty he will not allow them die like that after all jesus gave his only son let me tell you something this thing called the will of man is an implication on us the will of man stops god from assuming man needs his help your obedience is proof of your dependency in, on god it is costly to sit down and assume that after all god knows i need his help god knows i'm tired of poverty god knows i don't want death god knows the background i come from god knows the witchcraft in my family you have to engage the world through understanding and complete obedience complete obedience say amen the next time you pick your bible don't just search for what god has said search for what he told you to do to see what he has said this is how believers become matured let me tell you something brothers and sisters many of the continual woes in people's lives is not because the outstretched arm of the lord cannot show up it is because they are waiting and hoping that because jesus died upon the cross one day he will change my finances one day he will take away evil from my life that day may never come it says there remaineth a rest hebrews 3 4 for the people of god there remaineth a rest it says if you hear his voice harden not your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness and died the day you hear his voice is potentially the day of your breakthrough the meter of your success starts reading from the day you obey not from the day you hear you can hear god when you were 10 years and obey him when you are 40. the meter reads that you have obeyed god for one year obedience is what counts are we together 
not just blind obedience obedience based on understanding because you can obey nonsense you can obey what pastor said you can obey what apostle said but only hope that what apostle said is really what god said come i can give an instruction and god says let's go right that's how we are going to get the result are we together now and then you move left you see that with that kind of instruction listen two things will happen number one you stand a chance of being destroyed because although you are obeying my word is not consistent with the word of god now let me tell you something i've learned about god i've shared it here the mercy of god which is the last dimension of this series we are going to consider are we together now is such that because you obeyed me totally believing that i came from god god will remove that breakthrough and relocate it to your direction of obedience it should not have happened but because you will have to honor your faith because you received me as touching christ then god will deal with me now for misleading you so that one is between me and god but you are not going to be punished for obeying me as passive this is why you will see a man of god teach nonsense people will obey and still get breakthrough it's not because what the man is teaching is right it's because the testimony of god is upon their obedience and so god will prove himself then the man of god erroneously will justify that because it worked it meant it was correct no as you walk with god a day will come when god will say if you do it again i will deal with you i've been keeping quiet and you have been manipulating money from people the other time you lied that i sent you to a jimmy to collect hundred thousand he gave you and he got a car and you claimed it was a sign that you are you are apostle joshua selma if you tell anybody to give you money again i will personally reveal myself to you in the night vision <laughs> say obedience mary said whatever he tells you to do do it can we pray just for a minute and say lord the spirit of disobedience you know there's such a spirit pray get it out of my life oh god I'm tired of the way it has been cheating me and shortchanging my destiny. Caspito, be very serious about it. There are many of us, the moment God tells you to do something, there is a spirit that refuses you from obeying. Die! And the spirit said, don't worry, they are just trying to destroy your money. You are sick and God says, take the communion. It's all this nonsense. I don't want to look like a child. Cast it. It's a spirit of disobedience. No, oh, yes. We will obey. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Oh, oh yes Lord. hallelujah praise the lord god bless you thank you very much let's do a quick revision um in the last discussion that we had together we agreed that the first key the first principle prescribed by god for any individual any group of people to experience exemption is what we call the God first principle everyone say it after me yeah the God first principle according to Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 the Bible says to seek first his kingdom and I told us that when God becomes secondary in our lives we have signed in for disaster God must become first and all not first alone first and all first and all are we together anytime god becomes first alone that's not enough he must be first and all that's what gives meaning to every other thing that comes in your life and then the second thing we talked about is the mystery of kingdom service and we stop there am i right the mystery of kingdom service and i told us there are three dimensions to kingdom service we took on number one and we said soul winning and establishment 
please make sure you don't forget we agreed that soul winning talks of helping men find jesus and leading men to embrace the lordship of jesus over their lives and we examined a few scripture i don't want us to go there i'll just quote them quickly daniel chapter 12 verse 3 it says and they that be wise shall be like the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the brightness of the heavens even forevermore and um the bible also said in second corinthians chapter 5 18 to 20 that god has given us the ministry and the word of reconciliation both the ministry and the word of reconciliation and we looked at proverbs 11 verse 30 the bible says he that winneth souls is wise and remember what um david said about wisdom he said with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness he says by me kings reign and princes decree justice so part of the benefits of soul winning is that you have access to the wisdom of god that will produce results in your life so we'll take it off from there the second dimension of kingdom service that we must engage for supernatural exemption is service in the house of god write it down kingdom service service in the house of god exodus please exodus 23 and then we'll look at 25 to 26 please make sure you write it down and you follow carefully service in the house of god very few believers have been taught that service in the house of god is a system created by god for men to experience supernatural exemption exodus chapter 23 25 and 26 okay let's read it one two go and ye shall serve the lord your god uh-huh four things he will do four things i want us to understand what is your own part of the deal you shall and then when you do serve him he shall bless your bread and your water that's number one number two he shall take away sickness from the midst of thee number three verse 26 there shall nothing cast her young or be barren so we see the blessing of fruitfulness and finally the number of thy days i will fulfill all this and more just for serving in the house of god now listen carefully most believers think service in the house of god is a way to help the man of god and help his vision or help the church grow it is a very dangerous understanding part of the kingdom responsibility of any and every believer is to contribute actively to the advancement of his kingdom and that involves making sure that every structure and platform he has put together finds an atmosphere and an environment where people can be saved built equipped and empowered to represent his purposes and that includes service service in the house of god as prescribed by god in fact when the lord was sending moses to pharaoh this is what he said go and tell pharaoh let my people go that they may go and serve me serve me there are many people who have gotten more results than even their personal spiritual lives because they have subscribed to the foolishness of kingdom service are we together now many people do not know that service in the house of god brings blessings many people pity the man of god and say there's nobody holding camera guy let me not waste my nigerian tv college certificate let me just come and help them the moment you have an idea that you are helping a man of god or helping a ministry you have destroyed your potential for blessing through service are we together now every worker in the house of god is an employee by god you have to understand this every genuine worker in the house of god is an employee by god 
What a privilege to be in the labor force of God. You work for people you don't trust their integrity, you don't trust them. There is no guarantee of their reward. And here comes the king of the ages recruiting men and women to make sure that his house is served properly. Do you believe who lied to you that you will serve the king of kings? Look, there are men who serve God for a living. I'm not talking of pastors. They serve their way into unimaginable breakthroughs. As good as soul winning is, do you know it's a terrible thing? And this has been the foundation of our teaching even in this ministry. That you are born again and not actively useful. Your energy, your wisdom, your creativity is not contributing. I cannot sit down in a place and be comfortable that the grace, the gift, the creativity, the, the energy that God has given me is not participating in the building of the Lord's house. That when souls are saved, you cannot say my energy contributed. My wisdom contributed to making this happen. I was part of those who set the sound for those outside to hear the word of the Lord and be saved. I'm part of those who clean the altar to make it conducive. I'm part of those moving around. When someone fell under the anointing, as that demon was flying out of his life, I held him. If your energy cannot be accounted for as being used to serve God, you qualify for disaster. It's not a threat. It's the truth. Job 36 verse 11. Read with me, people of God. Job 36 verse 11. Job 36, please give it to us. Job 36 verse 11. One to read. If they obey and serve him, uh -huh, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. What's the condition? If they obey and... So if Bill Gates money, if Bill Gates energy, if Bill Gates institute is contributing, if Zuckerberg's Facebook is contributing to advancing the kingdom he qualifies to profit more than a tongue-talking christian whose energy are we together now if they obey and serve him the moment your energy you remember the bible says love the lord with all your heart uh-huh with all your might all your strength everything about you must contribute in that process you can't say i love god no 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 the worship songs that lift the spirit of men did they come from your secret place or are you just a recipient you came to the house of god and saw chairs cleaned and you argued and fought with people and sat down and god is watching when i was falling down why didn't you catch me you just allowed me to fall down like that and god is watching listen you can serve your way out of any cause and any yoke. I've said it years, years, and I will repeat it again. I, I don't want to use the word fear like dread, but I have a great respect for people who serve me in Christ and serve God because I know they are walking their way to an enviable dimension. Service. Malachi chapter 3, 17 and 18. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll do my best. I'll do my best I'll do my best for you I'll do my best I'll do my best I'll do my best for you My best Lord Is everything I have My best 
Lord, I give all I have to you. You made me great. You made me special. These guys don't know the song. You made me great. I give all I have to you. Yeah, you made me great. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord, I give all I have to you. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord, I give all I have to you. Listen, this used to be our national anthem those times when we were preparing for crusade. We would sing it and dance as we walked ourselves out like fools. It was a song I wrote as a love song to God. A, a declaration of my surrender. How could I give him less? You know when you go to buy clothes, they will tell you there is this type. But if you really have money, let's climb up. There is a section. I don't have that kind of thing with God. Everything he finds is all of me. Hmm. Service. Malachi chapter 3 verse 17 and 18. Let's read it. One to read. And they shall be mine. Uh huh. In that day when I shall make up my jewels, I will spare them. Read on. As a man spareth his son, not that loves him, that serves him. Next verse. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked uh -huh. between him that serveth God and him that serveth him there is a difference oh. sister don't let anybody fool you and say keep serving all these stupid people that's how everybody will marry and leave you just hold on God will give you a man that is equivalent to your salary of 30 years while the rest are there using whatsapp to connect and arranging you are serving. Do you know sometimes people can mock you as you serve God? They'll say you are serving God so that you get husband. Is that not a good reason? Is that not a good reason? Is it not better to serve God and be sure of what He gives? Oh, come on now. Many workers in the house of God are turned to be fools. Because they spend their time, they spend their energy, and when people who don't understand spiritual things look at them, they say, But Abba, Sam, you are underutilizing your potential. That's what they say. Simply because in many circles, maybe the people are not staff of the ministry and may not be receiving anything like a salary. And so men, you see newspapers insulting men of God and say the labor force they should have employed, they now get people in many churches while they are building you will see wealthy people come and they are trying to put it and they insult the men let me tell you certain things about your service that makes it fruitful number one your service must be willing if you serve God out of compulsion you will never receive a reward from it please understand this this is why as a ministry we never coerce people you don't manipulate people using courses and say if you don't say no 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 that's that's manipulation if there be first a willing mind willing mind service it must be willing number two it must be with joy it must be with joy you don't serve God with joy forget about your reward believe what I'm telling you grumbling all around say oh, today is Tuesday again we are just going to pray only God knows where apostle is we are just suffering to pray for him and he's enjoying let me tell you you speak like that God will punish you and the covenant I have with him will punish you two things against you very bad statement and when you stand ba, 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 and there you see people pray all their heart and say why are they doing this did they charm them 
that's the same way when they are enjoying the blessings and you talk god will say keep quiet thank god you saw them when they were praying like fools brothers and sisters i show you the 21st century investment serving god serving god banks will not teach you this oh serving god wholeheartedly with all your heart you are giving god everything you are sweeping the house of god and you know sometimes i watch these people when the power of god begins to move and sometimes people are around under the anointing coughing all kinds of things and you see all those ushers coming and i'm saying my god look at this sometimes they are there scrubbing the toilets cleaning the toilets people with dignity and respite and their reputation they throw it on the ground just because of the house of god if you were god will you leave them like that please answer me if you have been evil no i think i'm compassionate enough to see someone who is serving sincerely and not let him go hungry let me tell you something if you know you are serving god especially in this ministry wholeheartedly you have a right to claim a reward i teach the leaders you can go before god and say lord i am in your payroll no witch no devil no darkness i'm serving lord i swept your house with sincerity lord i was cooking the food this is the evidence of the firewood this is it this pain is a sky is a testament lord when i was given an assignment to lead prayer i did it with all my heart unto you when i was serving as a head of department it's not eye service with joy the bible says shall you draw there are many angry preachers when they come on stage you know they are angry as though the members are not blessing me i'm here blessing you and you're not please pastors don't harass any member they didn't call you go and meet the person who called you don't harass any member with money and all of that Do you know let me tell you something let me digress and talk about this money thing if you manipulate people to bless you number one that money will never be useful to you and you rob them of their blessing the secret of being blessed from people raise them raise men not money raise men empower people for your heart and teach them everything and they will surprise you some of you will build me houses in the future no 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 you will you will it's not whether you like me or not you will be too blessed to forget about me it's a programming something is happening to you i know you think i'm just motivating you and then tomorrow someone will be angry and say what is it about this guy you know let me tell you let me teach you a secret of greatness find people who are weak and start investing in them grow with them you can change their future but you can't change history your name is already imprinted in their starting up days not that you see somebody who you did invest in just because he has a car you say is my son are you stupid what did you contribute in his life that's why nobody calls a blind person his son nobody calls a deaf person my daughter because they are looking for privileges but there is a way you will bless somebody and pour your heart and they say lord bless me let me find something to do to this person true wealth is men the result of their impact and their gratitude to you for changing their lives all this run around one two you have not said anything you are saying sam I've been seeing you changing clothes and I've not eaten of your your reward. That's 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 a that's a lot of foolishness. No. God is my witness and I say it in the open. That I don't have any special person that I corner and say, "Please, you are a, a, an elite a group of people. You are the ones who will be servicing me." that's why i walked the word for myself you see why it's good to be blessed so that you can preach and not depend on anybody who tells you preach on on enemies then they change your message simply because they, they are buying generator you carry your generator and go away with it never mix money and ministry you will be doing a very foolish thing 
and not every seed is collectible some seeds are your birthright please don't be foolish pastors i don't know why i'm speaking to you now not every seed is collectible some seeds are you are collecting your dignity you are you are you are trading away your dignity and your destiny you must discern not everything is worthy of receiving bible says a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field let's continue service in the house of god it must be joyful god is my witness i know god be my witness in the midst of your people i have never i have never since god began to walk with me way before koinonia and this i have never for once turned and complained and say god guy this ministry friday again or this day again those who are close to me know that my work should do will take the grace of god otherwise you fall down and die one day and i do it joyfully tomorrow we're in gombe preaching again and casting every devil out and we're happy i do these things not because any man is paying me i do it first because i love him but i know that it is a mystery do you know let me tell you something do you know what people call job is simply the rat race of trying to make ends meet when god really blesses you you find out that there's not much to do in life truly truly there is not much to do in life i think it was during the leaders training i was teaching them this when you are really blessed if your salary is hundred thousand let's even be fair two hundred thousand per month in one year that's 2.4 million in 10 years that's 24 million right all things being equal in 20 years that's 48 million so you are working and that's what you plan to get if god gives you 60 million now you will get up in the morning when people are working you just be scrolling and say what exactly do i do today so you see that listen this occupancy we claim to be busy is simply we are trying to look for money to build so you have a 10-year project to build a house and you get it one by one but you can serve your way to a god who does not pay a fixed price he pays according to his riches not according My, your boss pays listen listen don't think i'm flattering you when you are in god's payroll laugh laugh for be happy service there are many people who have cheated themselves to serve your way into that child i've been burying for five years and you sit down and all you do is just come and sit down and be pulling your mouth and say kai why is the house of god hot today and the devil says continue this is the kind of people we like there is a way you can sweep any nonsense out of your life as you sweep the house of god and people are looking at you and saying ah, ah, all these guys apostle is standing they are standing how about even the ladies are standing do you know even during night vigils they stand what kind of punishment is this they say look at how church has torn your head and god here you know god hears people yeah lord i do it as unto you i'm tired but i carry the chairs yes i'm tired but i carry the chairs i was i sometimes i look at the ushers and they are so trained in my opinion i think our ushers are one of the best trained ushers in terms of sensitivity truly speaking and response to the spirit i have traveled to many places great churches big churches and it's surprising when the power of god begins to break out because most times the power of god breaks out at special events so the people know in koinonia anything can happen i can be talking now and somebody is flying up before you know it there's an usher there they have the sensitivity it's a training all that training just for an usher that's the training of a pastor when you finish that training should you be an usher to be that sensitive to hold people but he's watching brothers and sisters hear me i remember and i always share this there is none of us today that just got up and started ministry every one man of god that i know 
especially those who came out of Zaria, you can trace their history to times of dogged kingdom service. I jokingly used to tell people, I think 1994-95, thereabouts, I used to play keyboard for a man called Reverend Emmanuel Amechi Ani. Power Praise Chapel, they started it. We would have our local assembly and I would trek with my own keyboard. I would carry it and go there and I'm just playing. Little did I know that one day, that little shepherd will also become king. Because that's how he watches. You are behind the throne. You better leave it and stay and focus on, on, on making sure the sheep of God is healthy. Many of you just eye every throne you see. That's why you keep fantasizing. The secret to the throne is in your servicing the sheep. I remember I would play keyboard for them. Afterwards, they would just come and hug me, bless you, and on my way home. Trekking. I always say this only two things I received only two things from that ministry wonderful people don't have any I don't even know where they are today. during the launching of the man's cassette no CDs then they gave me one bottle of Fanta and one free cassette that's all I got for laborious service I carry my keyboard by myself I walk like a madman and I get one bottle of Fanta and and uh, and cassette he was into prison's ministry. But God was watching. You see that? Many of you just see. Before you start admiring people, find out their track record. They have a track record of service. Genuine service. Koinonia is where when people come, they throw away their golden crown. Nobody comes to do any big man. You are either serving God or you sit down there. Don't come and say, I am a... You don't come here outside and say, please prepare a special seat. And if you are special, we know. Once they don't know, you find someone and sit down. You don't come and say, look, I'm here together with my peer. No, no, we don't do that. Kingdom service. You want to experience triumph? You must be willing to serve God and serve in the house of God. Your energy your time your zeal your gift joyfully not complaining and say i don't like my head of department tells everybody thank you except me he didn't employ you no he should say so but if he doesn't turn to god and say lord you are the one i'm serving i serve you with all my heart lord you see every time i pray here lord you see every time during the rehearsals I spend hours and hours do you know let me tell you something and I want to submit to you I consider myself to be one of the most privileged man of God of my age range and my level I truly believe so God has given one of the best sets of workers in Koinonia I've told them too many times I think you should clap you really should clap hallelujah It is difficult to find a ministry where men are very anointed, gifted, and yet very loyal and sincere and true. You don't find it. You never find arguments going on in, uh, during the leaders' meeting. Uh, no, 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 no. Total submission, total loyalty to God. There are departments I don't visit for months and they never bend to the standards they are giving. The leaders serve with sincerity and truth. It's one of the secrets to my ministerial efficiency because most of the time is spent in prayer and the word and general oversight. Not going around to monitor because you suspect that these are... No, 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 no. no. Faithful people. Are we together? And among other reasons is because we sowed that seed of faithfulness. So we are not surprised. Do you serve God joyfully? And have you been indoctrinated and laughed at? Sisters, I speak to you particularly. Because there is this madness that flies around. The moment they see a young lady serving in the house of God, people just look at her. 
Those who say, ah, she's just serving because of husband. Others are saying, she's just serving because uh, all these ladies just wasting away, Jerry. Look at a fine girl like this. Will now come and make herself an idiot in church. Who told you the house of God is a place where destinies are wasted? Who preached that to you? Where did you get that indoctrination? That the house of God drives up the potentials of people. Let me tell you, the future, some of you, what you are doing now is already the price for the future. When you see men running around, God will say, I forbid you. You have served too much to serve men. I'm, I'm speaking to you from my heart tonight. How can I bow down before you? And then bow down before a man. No way. No way. Hey, how can I kneel down before you? And then kneel down before a man. No way. You must serve somebody in life. Either God or your shrine where you are coming out from that you are supposed to be the next priest you left carelessly at the altar is still crying for a servant you better secure yourself serving god there are many people who do not know that service is a mystery of exemption you can't be idle on or uh, idle on earth a master will occupy you you don't serve God, you serve sickness. You don't serve God, you serve pain. You don't serve God, you serve a bad and wicked and foolish and stupid man. You don't serve God, you serve another demonic roaming around your family. Let me tell you, any arrow sent from anywhere will come and meet me serving. It will bounce back a thousand times. Because there is a system. There is an insurance system in God. For those who serve him he says he suffered no man to do them wrong yea he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm he said i shall not die but live and declare as i'm serving i immune myself from death i think i was discussing with a few people um a few days ago look at me let me say something dominion dominion is not running away from things because of fear of satan is prevailing over them and triumphing over them are you getting what i'm saying let me give you an instance i think a discussion came up and then um, someone was asking a question and then i tried to clarify it if i'm supposed to go and preach now and you have a vision or a dream a true vision that my car is having an accident I will still go you see I will not allow that vision stop me from preaching my limitation is only the voice of God not the fear of death dominion is to change it and go anyway that's dominion if you allow fear destroy you you will not do many things are we together yeah There are too many people being governed by fear. They claim to be walking in dominion. They have the money for flights. They will never fly. Because every time they are about to fly, they see something in the night. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You are not glorifying God if you live an escapism life. You are always escaping. I just saw Sam that there will be an accident. And then Sam says, I'm not going again. Let's just be careful. One day, then... You've not seen people sit quietly in their houses and a truck came and killed them. The name of the Lord, rather, is a strong tower. The righteous enter. So as I'm driving, I'm in the name. The boss collides with the name before it collides with me. This is my understanding. And you know I travel a lot. We're about traveling tomorrow now. I'm saying these demons are hearing me. The spirit of death is hearing me. They are probably going to stand in the road to kill me tomorrow. And I'll be back on Friday. Now, you imagine that kind of frustration. 
apostle don't speak like this so oh. apostle we love you don't don't trouble them and they don't trouble i trouble them big time that's where i'm alive don't trouble them <laughs> you don't fear two people if you fear god that's enough How can I bow down before you and then bow down before them? No way. Hey, hey, no way. How can I sing a song before you and then sing a song before men? No way. Not our God, He's my God. You are my God. It's a revelation of Him that I have. It's a covenant with Him that I have. You are my God. Listen, a fish never fears plane crash because it has no business with the air are we together so when the bible says i am far above i have no business with certain realities they only affect you when you dwell in that realm i don't know how to make you believe this thing listen i speak not only because god said it I speak because I found what I have to do to make it work. When you make boastful statements like this without knowing your part, you will die like a chicken. The very next day, the cow will so butcher you leg and head together and scatter you. I've seen the spirit of death. I I've told you. Yes. I wish I were an artist. I would have drawn it for you. You see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. These spirits know men. They know those who know them. It's like somebody who is from your neighborhood and goes somewhere where they don't know him and says, my father is the CEO of Guarantee Trust Bank. And all of a sudden, you just come and say, ah, ah, oh, now let's go home. And say, you are falling my hand. That's how spirits work. When they enter a place, they search for who knows them. When they don't find, they start roaring. But when others step in, they say, oh, you give us where we have kingdom business to do. Kingdom business to do. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. See, let me tell you. If I were faking this thing, you would have known now. I have laid hands on too many people with cancer to not have received it myself. I've laid hands on too many people with communicable diseases not to receive it myself. I have done this ministry work for a while. Medical science gives us a time range when exposing yourself to certain things will destroy you. This thing is in your presence. I do all of that. No. It's called Zoe. The life of God. There is a record that we have it. Wow rising gradually to walking in the fullness of it but it's no excuse for darkness when we see them we stamp them say amen. amen but are you serving your way because not everybody qualifies to enjoy this thing we're talking about there are people who your service your service cannot rise as a memorial unto god isaiah 18 let's walk this and go to the next one quickly we have to pray Isaiah 38, sorry. Isaiah 38. Media help us. Isaiah 38. Let's look at a very interesting story here about a death sentence over a man by a true prophet. Isaiah chapter 38. Are we there? Let me read it. When I get to a place where all of us will join, I would let us know. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Sick unto what? New Living Translation. Don't turn there, but our new... Don't, don't give us New Living Translation. Modern day translation is an incurable disease. An incurable disease is a disease unto death. It says, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. 
And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him, saying, Listen, thus saith who? Not a demon, the Lord. Set thine house in order, for thou shalt and not live. Isaiah was not a false prophet. He spoke from the mouth of the Lord. Let's see something that Ezekiah did. Verse 2. Then Ezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Let's see the content of the prayer. Verse 3. And he said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart. And I have done that which is good in thy sight. When you read about Ezekiah, you find out that he served God with his life, his resources were coming to that. And Hezekiah wept so. Lord, is this how you reward your servants? Will I serve you and now die? That men will say, I served you and you killed me. Verse 4. Then came the word of the Lord again to Isaiah saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add, Unto thy days fifteen years. Verse 6. I will deliver thee and this city out of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. He reminded God. Do you have the petitions that you take before God? And say, Lord, look at the devil destroying my family. I'm a faithful servant in your house. Lord, last week, hundred people got born again. And oh God, I was part of those who led them outside. Remember. And God arises and says, No, you are putting pressure on my integrity. I must arise and act for you. Hallelujah. It must be willing, it must be joyful. And you must serve God with diligence. Diligence. You don't serve God with laziness and slackness. You don't serve God with slothfulness. You serve Him willingly. You serve Him joyfully. You serve Him diligently. Let's go to the next one. The next dimension of kingdom service. So there's soul winning and establishment. There is service in the house of God. And then number three, kingdom investments. Serving God with your resources. Kingdom investments. One of the strangest mysteries of exemption. Kingdom investment. It literally is an investment. Serving God with your resources. Serving God with your resources. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. Popular scripture. We all know it. It says, Cry yet saying, Thus saith the Lord. Zechariah not Zephaniah. Cry yet saying, Thus saith the Lord. My cities, he says, through prosperity shall be spread abroad and I will yet comfort Zion. Cry yet say, thus saith the Lord, my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion and shall choose Jerusalem. My cities shall through prosperity listen i want you to know that financial resources and other kinds of human resources play a major role in kingdom advancement don't mind those who tell you money is not important in kingdom advancement no that's not true that's a wrong theology we have money mongers and we have those who are frustrated with the issue of money both of them are wrong money is important just like the anointing financial resources are important for kingdom activities and god's system is such that listen men wholeheartedly commit their lives their resources and everything to the building of the kingdom 
by faith in obedience and total trust and they in turn schedule seasons of untold breakthroughs and blessings it's how the system of God works my cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad so whoever contributes with his resources to making the house of the Lord built to making sure that the activities of kingdom advancement keep on going that person qualifies for certain blessings please give us Psalm 112 verse 9 NIV if we can get it Psalm 112 verse 9 I love the rendition uh, that the NIV puts if we can have that Psalm 112 verse 9 this is the reason why many people Psalm did I say 112 122 I beg your pardon 122 Psalm 122 verse 9 I like us to read one to read for the sake of the house of the Lord our God I will seek your I seek it not just to buy jeeps and cars houses vacations that's too small a reason to subject yourself through the stringent laws of wealth but it is for the sake of your house I will seek your prosperity I'm trusting God to bless me with resources oh God so that I will contribute in getting your activities done listen please the message of prosperity is not a demonic message there is such a message called the message of prosperity and it is not a demonic message it may have been taught selfishly it may have been taught inaccurately but that does not stop the fact that there is such a message and it is part and parcel of the truths of the gospel that believers must learn and know is God's economic system where people empower the advancement of his kingdom and receive rewards listen listen kingdom investment has nothing to do with just tight kingdom investment is not tithing kingdom investment is not worship offering kingdom investment is a sacrifice a commitment between you and god to commit your resources on a continuous basis to seeing that his house is built to seeing that his kingdom is advanced the gospel is preached lives are saved this is a commitment it is not a special thing that you gather believers and say okay right now all of you bring one one thousand naira it is the inaccurate understanding of the things of god that sometimes will have to necessitate those special events listen part of the financial system of my life every major money that comes to me i know that investing in the kingdom is part and parcel of my spiritual growth process no special event if x amount comes to me my tight god's portion is going i will never come to the house of god empty-handed i come with my worship offering joyfully there is a portion for my parents to bless their life there is a portion to bless people and improve on their lives but then there is a huge and i mean huge truly for the advancement of the kingdom I have a list of men of God I have a list of ministries that I sow into their life perpetually continually some per week some per month continually except resources don't come not be some of them don't even know me kingdom investment with all humility and i say this just to let some of us know not just to brag or make noise there are many programs that have happened in this city many programs that have happened around this nation and parts of the world that i just keep quiet i just carry a seed as god directs and i say you go and sow go and give that man of god sometimes i say just tell him no problem there's no need announcing it sometimes i say don't even tell them just go and sow this seed and i'm happy to see that my seed is saving souls I'm happy to see that someone's life 
posters are printed through my seat i'm happy this water now is probably someone's seed you see that this pulpit right now is someone's seed a commitment to contributing resource wise to see in the kingdom you don't have to wait i keep challenging believers listen i wish i'm not the one teaching you this but i love you too much i have a scriptural obligation to teach you the truth and that i will do regardless of how you feel i will teach you the truth don't think this is some system to coerce money no 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 no. i fear god too much to do that but i have to tell you the truth because it's what i'm also doing a true kingdom investor finds a need in the house of god he's not told about the need you find it the same way you find a need in a rich man's life out of psychophancy to get project i say honorable i've seen that you've been wearing only two shoes and he says you won't believe that i have only three he said i brought five you see that you brought five because you are hoping that you will buy relationship and it will work for you hallelujah find a need in the house of god look three of us let's come together koinonia needs more cameras how much is it x amount let's come together let's do an inventory consult with these people the house of god oh i think that i have two thousand naira, and my two thousand naira can buy three chairs in the house of god you come on friday dancing with three chairs three breakthroughs in your life as you drop it a sinner sits on that chair and the fire from heaven falls on him as he's getting born again let me tell you god is issuing a warning he sat on that chair to be blessed find a need don't wait until you are told you find a need ah, i look at this what can i do find a need. but many believers don't they just sit down you need to see how believe offering time is, is one of the most irritating time in many churches offering time and somebody just brings out something and tells his wife or whoever do you have they, know, they, they, take. they bring out one thousand they put it back they bring out 500 they put it back they bring out 200 naira the new one they put it back then they carry the old ones it says, oh, shall come and drop it and god is watching as soon as they finish they move straight to chicken republic and burn 5000 take ice cream for starters take all of this and call friends sometimes who are not godly let's come and enjoy and god sees your passion and then you lift your voice i love you lord god he said you're a liar that's that's not true you don't love me god so loved the world that he gave is that same attitude that follows men in marriage is that same attitude that follows in everything when you love without giving you a liar and a hypocrite true love comes with giving passionate sincere giving let it be a sweet sweet sound in your ear when I lift up my seed before God, as I sow those seeds, I am happy. It is my joy that I want to live my life in such a way that every month I'll be buying a bus for a church somewhere. What a joy to get to a church and see and say, what is your budget? And they say, we need a new cathedral. How much? 20 million. And you say, okay, let me just have a private discussion with the pastor. And I say, pastor, just give me the plan. Send your engineers to supervise. In three months, that church is lifted. Quietly. Noiseless contribution. You think God will allow men to will? If you have a helper like that, will you allow men to kill him? If your job is to pray for that person and the devil and God wakes you and says the devil wants to take his life, oh no, come on, you will get an energy you never knew you had. You will pray and say, God, it's better to take one of my legs than to kill that man. But, Apostle, I don't have much. You will never have much. You give your way to that much. You give your way to that much. You can sit down and say, Look what can i do for the worship team we have just hundred thousand sam this is for the dressing of the worship team so they look good this is to buy time for the media department 
you don't have to come and say make sure apostle knows i'm the one you have you have killed and scattered and destroyed your potential we live in a very political uh, christianity where people like announcement and accurate we are now announcing that chief a and b is the one who gave that golf outside you have destroyed everything he says you give let your right hand not know what you i'm not saying there's no place of honor don't get me wrong what can i do for you my lord i want you to know my heart is yours it's not a question of what you can do for me but what can i do for you that's love that's genuine love by the grace of god let me tell you and i say it with all humility i don't want you to do it for me there are people here people here i know they have committed themselves with resources to say joshua selman it should never it should never happen that you are looking for water and my seed does not come see let me tell you i say it with all humility i'm a blessed man i'm not talking about your money at all i don't serve god because of money not at this level god has been faithful are you getting what i'm saying now so don't think it's some coercion so that somebody will just bring an envelope no no but i'm telling you you don't practice this you will not be exempted though from the woes where the heavens of men will be brass and their earth iron sacrifice don't listen to these junk that people have, have been warning you about people who don't fear god and don't know anything about god to be carnally minded the bible says is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace carnal people come and discuss all kinds of things you don't serve God with your resources, you will serve sickness, you will serve trouble, you will serve divorce, you will serve pain. You can serve your way and vow your way. I think I've shared that testimony here. How that there was a particular uh, man of God, he, he was years ago, he gave this testimony, a very true one. Him and his wife, God is my witness, they were in a meeting. And I think they needed to roof a church or something like that. And whilst they were there, the man of God preaching was challenging people to sow into the work of God, you know, genuinely, not out of eye service and manipulation. Genuinely. And the Lord just spoke to the man clearly that he should give up his house, his real house, real estate, his property, to give up his house and move to a rented house. Can you imagine that costly instruction? He didn't know how to tell his wife. So according to him, he said as soon as he held his wife's hand, she started crying. Because the Lord had told her the same thing too. Brothers, may you marry a wife like that too. That will allow you to obey God. You marry a bad wife, you will not be exempted. May you marry a wife, if all you are looking for is figure eight, and you don't open up your spirit to pick signals, that God can say, this is what we are doing. And your wife will say, I may not understand, but I trust you. I trust the word of God upon your life. Say amen. amen. And be serious about what you just had. Go around and choosing nonsense and destroy your life. Because to be carnally minded is what? Then. You won't know now. By the time the euphoria of young life is gone. You will start seeing what it means to live with a man or a woman who does not fear God. God says go left. He says no, we are going right. God says go right and you perish like Jonah. Hallelujah. I believe I have had a chance to repent had he not married Jezebel. Because he looked like a calm king. She looked like a wicked demon that would not allow him. He looked like a calm person. But her presence there. So he held his wife's hand and they agreed the will of God be done. How many of you know that if God gives you and your wife that kind of instruction, relatives will kill you? Even Christians. They say, which church first are you going to give the house? That man that is already rich. You, you people will never stop becoming fools in Nigeria. 
because to them giving is helping then they will now tell you we have the poor and the needy in the villages you don't give a poor man to be rich you give a rich man to be rich learn this principle you bless poor men to secure the help of God he says to answer you in the days of trouble but when you want to rise the law of honor you sow to a man that has attained the dimension you desire don't give poor people expecting to be rich all that superstitious thing that they say meet a leper and drop one naira is witchcraft you drop it you will be broke I tell you you sow into an anointing to rise I didn't sow to people less than me to be where I am you so higher the queen of sheba knew that's why she carried gifts and came to solomon do you bless a rich man that's why you are sowing into the anointing the very anointing that god has so you rise up to his realm people do foolish things in the body of christ with no spiritual intelligence and then we are doing zealous things but they don't bring results to us giving is helping so many people say the poor and the needy. Jesus said the poor you will always have with you. You will always have. Don't be a hypocrite. You will always have with you. The person who is writing that junk journalism, he did sell his iPad to give the poor. He used an iPad of 200,000 to write nonsense about men of God. You see that? Be careful. How you hear don't let people make the truth the simplicity of the gospel become just a social discussion a spiritual man is not just a homo sapien a spiritual man hails from above with another life and another economy you have to understand this they obeyed god and they gave up the house according to him all hell broke loose everywhere went haywire you know people who insult the woman you mean you cannot advise your husband what a stupid woman the man look at your wife and children and when they went to a rented apartment gave up that i think they sold it and moved the church oh I, I hope i'm getting the story right and then i think he said that god made a vow to him that he will never need to buy a house again in his life never and that man at the time he was speaking i think he was saying he had well over 10 houses none 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 came from his money one not part and then you complete it somebody builds a house furnishes it and say god instructed me now you see people operating at such a realm you don't know what they gave up you give up things to go up oh. you give up things to go up you don't carry luggages to go up spiritually financially leadership you when you see people rising find out what they left behind nobody rises with luggages you must be willing to give up some things to rise in the anointing you must give up some things to rise in ministry you give up some things to rise serving god with your resources there are instructions today i don't like talking about my personal life and the instructions that god has given me but those close to me know my life is like a madman i am a reckless giver if you are close to me and we are sharing accounts you will take me to court because the lawyer will even be tired because you will not know what to say again i don't know how many times i have emptied my accounts at the instruction of the lord to zero zero i'm not talking there is one secret one somewhere sincerely god is my witness as a ministry we have done it there was a year god gave an instruction at the start of the ministry to empty everything i told the finance department oh yeah god said it let it go it was less than one week how many days less than one week almost 10 times that amount came back do you believe this into the kingdom lord this is for your glory there are times and i say this with all humility the finance department will send budget of another department and i tell them don't bother what a joy it's not because this is this is not my ministry this is god's ministry right i only lead this ministry by the privilege of his election but it is god's ministry but what a joy i tell them don't worry don't worry sometimes i see the concern in the treasurer's face and i'm happy i will never pity myself as to remain at my current level no what are you willing to give up to go up
God is speaking to somebody. What are you willing to give up to exempt you? Let me tell you. There are people's seeds I know. It's a covenant with God. Darkness will come and loom around them. They will come out like smoke before the fire. Nothing will happen because the investments they have made for the kingdom is like, it says, it's, it's like the blood of Abel crying. There is blood through their sacrifice that is crying to the heavens. You try to walk against me, you are, you are a joker. I tell you, I say this with all humility. You are a joker. It's not even me that will fight. It's the altar that is full of seeds. When you hear people cry and say, my altar, that thing is not some superstitious thing. An altar is a place of sacrifice. It's a threshing floor. Bishop Oyedeko, I think it was him or somewhere in living faith. A story was being given about, I think it was a woman who was a tither or a giver in the house of God. And armed robbers came. They were knocking i think they were about to shoot the man or the woman something like that and i think is it the giving booklet or the tight booklet the person brought and dropped it on the ground and said the armed robbers should cross it and come and kill them and they could not do anything when you engage them they walk when you imagine them they don't walk when you sit down and wish that they walk they don't walk they must be engaged there are things I have prayed for once that came into my life with speed. There have been times in my life where I cried that God defend me and I prayed once over it. Because God said, no problem. You've got this covered, your seeds. Do you have a sacrifice like Hezekiah in this time of exemption? Lord, I want a job. Lord, everybody in my family is not making it except me. Thank God I'm a Christian. Have you forgotten that your elder one is a pastor? And still, his wife has not given birth. He's, he's winning souls. And his wife has not given birth. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Hannah gave her home before the child came. And said, God, look. This is not about me. Oh. This is about you. Before the child arrives, I've dedicated him. And God says, that's it. I give it to you. I know people here who have sacrificed please come Ejimi. let me tell you something about Ejimi. when we were preparing for a crusade the first time among all of us sorry i'm having to say this i know he may not like it he was the only one among us that time that had a computer a desktop right then he used to make shirts the poster of the first crusade he designed it by himself with joy as a sacrifice and then i remember when we that time we needed a lot of money and you know we're trusting god you know people were sowing but it was a need and he did two things now i'm not saying you should do it but he did two things that i will never never forget number one he carried his laptop his his computer i was just passing suleiman and i saw notice and I saw the description of the laptop and I met him. I said, Why? With Jesus' joy. He said, No, that laptop must go. We need the money. I've told you about our ladies who would climb trees. They were members of the worship team, they were members of welfare, they were members of everything. The ladies, because there was no money to buy firewood then, with joy, they would sing. We still have the videos. That time, people like Victor and Aaron. Aaron was then, please stand up Aaron. Aaron was in charge of protocol. This Aaron you see. Victor that you see the head of protocol. He was in technical then. That time they would carry wood on their head. And then dance. Hey, oh. That was the song they used to sing. Hey, oh. Dancing. Hey, oh. My season has come. I remember. Hold on. 11 years ago 11 years ago pouring their heart to the kingdom are we together see brothers and sisters i remember his mother dear mother of blessed memory one silver watch the most expensive watch then i had ever used remember when his mom went to london and bought it and said they should give me the day god asked me to sew that thing i wanted to die but I still gave it. Hi, God. But I gave it. I mean, it went. I'm glad it went. I'm glad it went. 
It would have been the only one I still have till now. The mother, alongside other women in Lagos, mobilized welfare packages. Remember? And they brought all of that. I remember that time, Aaron, we went with two luxurious buses when we were going to for the for the crusade in Abuja. How they mobilized it, I do not even know. We're praying and planning. Bless you and thank you, Jimmy. So don't be surprised when his children are intelligent and happy. He served his way to that. His children will never beg for bread, not when I'm alive. Even if he decides to be careless with his life, it's too late. Not when I'm alive. If he decides today that I will never do anything kingdom again, together with his wife, I said, I, I, I agree to, for you to be an extra luggage in my life. Let's keep going. When we are talking about Koinonia 10 years from now, will your name be mentioned? No, 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 don't say, don't, don't, this is not an issue of amen. I'm asking you a serious question. Will you say, will you say, listen, listen. Will you say, this speaker came because my seed was there. Oh, I remember the tie that this gentleman used. Right? People giving their hearts and their lives. Graduate, standing as if they are foolish. You think these guys are idiots for just standing like this? Working? Some of them have come from their various workplaces and it's evening. There are people who come in every week from other states. It's a sacrifice. See, let me tell you, the, the moment you find yourself complaining about the house of God, know that that spirit is there to destroy you. Because everything God designs in the kingdom is for your good, not for his good. He's already self-sufficient. Don't forget El Shaddai. He said, if you will not praise me, it is within my power to raise up stones. God, don't replace me. I'm still available and I'm willing. There is such a thing like replacement. Because now I neither hot or cold, I will spew thee from my mouth. For as long as I live, I will not only praise God, my resources must join me and praise God. What use do I have? Having cars when the house of the Lord is not advanced? Real estate, real nonsense. The real estate is a kingdom estate. Traveling on vacation, spending a million dollars over a week. No, except I've done something satisfactorily for the kingdom. There is a minimum of amount of offering that I cannot give. I will be wicked and unfair to God and to His faithfulness in my life. If at this level He has brought me financially, I give God certain levels of offering. No. There is an amount. I trust God to get to a target of an amount that I give God. Never less than it. If it is in your heart, God will bring it in your heart. If at this level, I squeeze 1,000, I squeeze 2,000, give God as an offering, I'm a wicked person. How much do I eat with? How much are my clothes? And then the house of God, 2,000, 3,000, me? No. There are some of you as you are sitting here, God has lifted you, what you're giving has remained. So your giving drew you back. Because he said, your giving told God you were not yet qualified. And God said, if your giving says, remain, I can't say you should rise. Remain. I have given dangerous seeds in my life. I have sown seeds on behalf of my parents for their longevity. I have sown seeds on behalf of my children unborn. I have sown seeds on behalf of this ministry. Ask those who know me, this ministry is a giving ministry. The economic system of Koinonia is a crazy system. That's why many times I thank God for the way church runs. Because if it's America, I'm sure they would have sued us now. Say, no, 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 no. This and that and that. You sow that seed and God gives you faithful people. He may not give you money back, 
but he will give you one person that will reduce headache there has not been any case in this ministry that has stabbed me of sleep to say somebody just came and is stubborn no parents you can use sacrifice to bail every nonsense out of your children when a woman gives birth a man buys a jeep for her which is wonderful right when a child takes first position they fly him to hawaii rather than doing that invest in his future first and say lord this is for my child i buy this speaker for the house of god not nonsense not change not carry torn clothes and say lord i give it in your house you don't give god rubbish no you give god i will not give god anything that will not cost me i look forward to times oh god sees my heart when if i hear any church make noise they want something before they say anything is provided and God will open doors for you beyond your imagination. If your if your purpose of financial prosperity is just to wear designers and fly private jets, is too small a reason for God to rend the heavens and give you a blessing that you will not have room enough. Lord, if you're healing someone in this city. Don't do it without me. That's my prayer, Lord. Don't do it without me. Oh, Lord. If you're changing someone in this nation, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Oh, may, 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 may it never come to a point in my life when my seed stops advancing the kingdom please tell me what else will i be doing with it servicing sickness servicing poverty as i'm speaking to you you see your greed rising you are trying to believe what i'm saying but your greed is fighting you i wish you would push this thing away no sir god wants to help you i show you the mysteries of blessings that people just rise up god has said it's the year of trial because you are still going to see people rise up in strange ways you will see it's already happening to people you are hearing testimonies of people and you're saying what exactly are they doing that they are rising because in the world system you have they have to show you the boss and the salary slip but this one the, the boss is invisible the business is by faith but the reward is the only thing you see don't do it without me don't do it without me sacrifice of your life your resources sometimes when i'm going for ministrations i'm so tired sleeping in the car or sleeping in the plane and i'm asking myself why why am i doing this do i have to do this and i just remember it's a privilege i take pleasure in worshiping i take pleasure in worshiping i take pleasure in worshiping you lord take my body my soul my money and breathe on me he has to take everything take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me listen if you give God your spirit you give God your brain and leave your pocket you are carnal and a liar because where your treasure is that's where your heart is are we together my life my finances and every part of me is open for his scrutiny his probing and his instructions any day any time without prior notice belongs to him we are going to pray you want to be exempted there is a price i know many of you just believe i will just tell you be exempted in jesus name brothers and sisters there is a price i won't lie to you i fear god too much to deceive you what is the disadvantage of not being exempted write it down 
the disadvantage of not being exempted was in the scripture we considered with Cain. He said, all who see me will slay me. He didn't say all men, all things that see me will slay me. The disadvantage, the major disadvantage of not being exempted is that you become a victim of anything and everything. Write it down. You become a victim of anything and everything. Although redeemed, although potentially speaking, you should not be a victim of those things. But you become a victim of anything and everything without hope for recovery. The Bible says, these people have been alienated from the life of God through ignorance. It says, having their understanding darkened, they have been alienated from the life of God. Alienated from the life of God through ignorance. Listen, it's a risk to give birth to a child and not know whether that child will live long or not. It's too risk. If you've lost a child, I, I, my heart goes out to you. Don't feel bad. But I'm telling you, there is a way out. Please listen to me. It's a risk not knowing that you come out today and go back. Remember, there are those who have done it. We are not the first to do it. Remember our song, we are surrounded by many. They have crossed this river. There are men who have lived that long. I looked at my father and my mother one time that I went to greet them and I was just smiling. Do you know one thing I know will keep my parents long? Thanksgiving. If there is anything I've learned about my father, my father is a man who can thank God in a way that will annoy you. He would thank you. know how old people thank God? They thank God for things you consider to be silly. We young people say, please, if it's the air you breathe, we thank God. Until the day you breathe through a tube for one month. You stay and breathe in and out. You will say thank you. I've had the opportunity to go to hospitals. And to see people. I remember the most recent. I think it was sometime last year. Went to see one, went to see one of our ladies. And I went there. Close to her bed. I watched somebody die. I watched it. The process. At that point, all your greed follows you to the grave. All your seeds that have refused to be given, like the rich fool, the consequences of not using your resources. He said, this day, he sat down and built a barn and put the money and said, my soul, you have money in GT Bank, you have money in Zenit, you have real estate, you are a millionaire, fine rest, and God says, thou fool, your soul today, today will be required of you. Money does not follow men to the grave. Hmm. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Pay attention and leave. Can you know that your life will be great? Oh, I'm standing today now. One shoe, one bag, one room, one stove, one pot. But I'm sowing my way. Is there a guarantee? that tomorrow this loss will work for me and then I will be the one to be able to turn back and be a blessing ask me I have the answer that's how we rose that's why when people are bragging and saying we are this we are the intellectuals Harvard this we went to this some of us know how we came we served our way through the mercy of God and look what God has done today do you know why it is marvelous in our eyes? Because it is the Lord's doing. If it's a man's doing, it's too small to be marvelous in your eyes. You are marvelous here. You are marvelous here. You are marvelous here. Marvelous here. That's what men will begin to say about your life. That you are marvelous yeah. You are marvelous yeah. You are marvelous yeah. Never allow 
any man despise you you may not have it now but you are walking your way sister you don't need to prove to anybody you can buy nothing the word of god will prove itself continue you may not have what it takes wear your one shoe honorably don't borrow anybody's shoe and tie to prove any point there's too much truckload of proofs coming in the future i know you are a man of god you have only one tie iron it with honor and so so into the kingdom don't buy suits you are not wise if you do that no i want to package myself so that i will look like a apostle you are cheating yourself you will look like me soon let me just tell you the truth you will between me and you is a ladder of obedience you will have to climb it diligently and by the grace of god my job is to shorten your journey not take it away that journey is there you will walk it that's why i don't pity people when they cry sometimes it's good to let the tears roll i love you but i cannot stop your journey i can only reduce it so sometimes people cry and say apostle nothing is working and they think i will clean the tears i say no let it flow because to, if it does not flow you will not clean somebody's own it's not wickedness there are times i've seen people in situations i want to bless them and the lord said no don't interrupt what i'm doing in their life they are, I'm, I'm showing them something and i'm saying lord but they know i can help them say no no i'm teaching them trust just like it's happening to someone right now every door of your helpers have closed god is saying it's deliberate don't even try to pray for open doors because i'm the one closing it to teach you i'm teaching you how to rejoice in the storm i'll praise you in the storm remember i will lift my hands you are who you are no matter where i am and every tear that falls you hold in your hands listen let me tell you something i'm preaching a message to you now koinonia don't be ashamed of your tears let it flow let everyone see you cry so that when you rejoice they won't say you cheated you followed the laws mommy you may cry but cry in faith cry honorably as you sow the seed there is he that weepeth bearing precious seeds i remember the day the lord asked me to sow 80 percent of my clothes everything 80 percent 80 percent of everything before then he had asked me to give everything i've shared with you the testimony 2007 in port Harcourt. i carried everything i had home and abroad plus the rechargeable lantern that was all i had laid my hands and prayed on it for three hours dragged it to church then god decided to disgrace me i was in the overflow outside when people were giving god said i should sit down when people were now giving cars and lands when they finished god said you can now go i was moving ladies were looking at me guys were looking at me but i was looking at my future oh yes i was oh yes i was and i went and dropped that thing the bag was not i don't even know what they did with it when they dropped that bag i went back and sat down i did it for his house and the lord spoke to me and said my son from today you have entered wealth men walk by mysteries my mother is one of the happiest people around it's not just because we're alive it's because of the quality of the children she has we're discussing with the today I bless my parents till the day Jesus comes till the day Jesus comes without fail whether they obey scriptures or not I am obedience to them the same way the priests that they, they receive tithes on behalf of the Levites have received it for them may you do that for your parents so may your obedience today make your parents live long so that you will take away this stress that is killing parents young now you see a parent 70 years they can't walk because the son at 40 is still coming mommy please can you borrow me hundred thousand i say how much is my pension he said just give me are you determined to be exempted we are going to pray sister take my message seriously barrenness is still real Barrenness does not just come on bad ladies who live wayward lives. There are sincere people. You can start exempting yourself now. 
don't wait until the day you get married and try and try and try and nothing happens gentleman don't wait until the day a landlord harasses you you say i'll start giving start now don't wait and say apostle but I've, I've not, i'm not even in a relationship that's the good time to start sowing that seed your seeds can go ahead of your future lord i carry this sacrifice it's for you it's for you ask Ejimi. he's a witness what did i do with all my scholarships not once did I? I was on two scholarships. I was on mobile. I was on total final elf. Then they used to call it. Then there was no GT Bank in Zaria. We we'll go to Kaduna and cash it. Ask him. He's a witness. Everything went for the kingdom. Other people were buying laptop. They were buying this. I used my scholarship for the kingdom. Behind every story, every glory, there is a story. Don't just sit down desiring men's results. This is what, this covetousness in the body of Christ. Oh God, I like Ejimi's watch. I like this. I like Pastor Alpha's shoe. Stop those things. That, that's not how to claim. You claim through obedience. Obedience. We are really going to pray seriously. Because I want you to be exempted. Listen to me brothers and sisters. The danger that looms around. There is real danger. Psalm 91 tells us. There is danger on your children. Born or unborn. From the womb now children get mysteriously sick. Father does not have that sickness. Mother does not have that sickness. From that period of conception to delivery. The child comes out with one kind of nonsense. I remember one of our ladies who gave birth to one baby. He later died. You know, I remember them meeting me. They gave it to the baby. The baby was an imbecile. You know, nothing, neck will not move, hand will not move, nothing. And I remember the pain the mother used to go through. I went back to God and I said, Lord, what happened? What happened? And then I told them, I said, Look, sacrifice is the last bus stop in this kingdom. When all else fail, you sacrifice is a master key. It will tear that heaven open. I show you a mystery. There are times I've come to certain places that I know some doors will not open. I prayed, they didn't open. I fasted, they didn't open. And I reached out through intelligence. I took seeds that shook heaven and I swung those doors open. And Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon said, Gather me 1,000 animals. They said, Sir, are you dashing people? He said, Don't ask me any question. Bring knife, slaughter them. Number one, number two, he says, Spill the blood. There was a field. God kept watching. He said, Let's watch how far he will go. When he got to 500, he didn't stop. God said, My God, what is this? Who is this man? Who gave him this kind of heart to sacrifice? Immediately, God came to him and said, Solomon, you called me. Sacrifice has a voice, it can call God. I'm telling you a mystery. Some of you are in situations right now your education cannot bring you out. It will not bring you out. You are in a situation where you are about to break through something. The pastor, your family with all his anointing did not, was not exempted from that trouble. Bad luck. People rise to certain levels. The moment they reach there, they crash. You are number seven out of 13 people. Nobody's walking. And you say, I got first class. You better switch. There is a mystery of exemption. Everybody that married in your family, the lifespan of the marriage was four years. They prayed in tongues, the marriage is scattered because there is a spirit covenanted authoritatively. It takes sacrifice. I have done this for myself. I have done this for Koinonia. Hi. Brothers and sisters, you are sitting on blood. You are not just sitting on chairs. You are sitting on tears. You are sitting on sacrifices that brought you. That's what brought you here. It's not Joshua Selman's revelation. Sacrifice. Many people cannot do this thing. It's hard. That's why very few are exempted. I never told you it would be easy. I won't lie to you. There is he that weepeth. There are things this man has done 
there are sacrifices i remember one time i'm sorry i'm having to say he carried a seed together with his wife and i knew this was a serious seed there are people here who have done it sacrifices unto death a kind of sacrifice that when you finish you say god i hope this thing is right i hope it works i told you about my mother my mother almost brought tears out of my eyes i think it was towards the end of last year she said her death will my mother said if she dies any benefit that will come they should transfer it to koinonia a woman alive covenanting her will for god where is the devil that will kill her that's the realm when you say for for me to live is christ and to die is king listen we rise in this kingdom through sacrifice we exempt ourselves through sacrifice strange sacrifice i have watched it open doors for me i have watched it open doors for people great men that you see in this nation the secret is not just the sacrifice of prayer their seeds have gone if i tell you i don't practice this i you I, you those close to me know I am a bank of working seeds nothing just stays idle I send it to my future I send it fast I may cry sending it hallelujah I was talking to a Jimmy and I was telling him I said I have so much in the charge card in my phone I don't know what to do he asked me how much I said 41,000 what will I do with a charge card my phone loaded with 41,000 one naira is not for me one naira is not for me what will i do with it you are not ready for blessings till your seed speaks oh you mean you are enjoying no no when blood touches the earth heaven must answer who said your family will never be rich there is this cause of poverty and you have been giving you just give 10 10,000 give 10 naira. you are not ready to move oh let me tell you the truth there is a day you come and say lord my children i served idols my father served idols it was in idolatry i gave my life to christ i've not even stabilized my stand i know these altars are fighting me therefore i lift up a fortification gather unto me my saints psalm 50 verse 5 please give it to us they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice a covenant with me by sacrifice listen you are at a phase in your life where you should not pity money listen listen to me wasteful spending is bad but fearful spending is demonic you don't spend your money buying shoes spend your money breaking altars spend your money breaking covenant leave all those shoes don't be foolish they will come prove any point to anybody lord i have watched my elder brother rubbish i watched my elder sister she got married and got mad this first day this will not happen oh i know it will not happen because i'm in koinonia if you don't do what koinonia people are doing you'll be surprised i'm showing you the secrets brothers and sisters let me tell you they will sit with you like this and tell you they are coming to jail you coming to take you to prison coming to take you to this you cannot pay your rent your sacrifice that's when you see that sacrifice is powerful there is a lady i don't know if she testified i have the text message in my phone i shared it with you Jimmy. two days ago her mother practically died and the girl said no 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 way and she called i think she may be a worker or so she sent a text i told her to come and share it by herself i don't know if she was a worker or whatever and do you know this lady said she said kai i can't use my faith again everything went bad and she sent me a text you know what she sent she said apostle i can't use faith i use the covenant you have with god do you know what i did i put the text i told you Jimmy, what i did i put the text and i threw it on my bed i said lord look at what this lady said her mother came back to life yesterday yesterday 
The text is still in my phone. Take over. Take over. Lord, I come to the end. The end of greed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have come. Listen. Listen. Till today, they serve idols in my village. Till today, they serve idols in my village. With the reign of Christianity, you are not the first to have causes. I told you demons used to oppress me. As a man of God, anointed healing the sick i went to pastors i said what is this thing that demons come to press me in the night they said i don't have faith i said what is faith i've done everything they define faith to be brothers and sisters there are certain altars that after you have prayed i wish what i'm telling you is a lie i know you are in christ but i show you the mysteries behind the pain of men there are some seeds alone that will break some altars and smash it to pieces and in one year one year when it was time to save man jesus christ god did not make a pronouncement he dragged his son when the son went to god got her. when his blood did that's why no power the only power that can overcome god is the power that can give a son with that same condition any other deity that can turn a God to become a son and sacrifice him will have more power than God. He looked around the heavens and found no one greater and he swore by himself. The seed shall bruise the head. The seed. Please look at me. Look at me. If I have preached and I have told you a lie, may a curse come upon me and my children that are unborn. If I have manipulated you for any gain, listen, I don't care who you are, how old you are, what you read. If you want to rise above witchcraft in this life, you want to rise and match the head of the devil, it's not just your prayer and your voice. There is he that weepeth. You don't just drop money like that. The sacrifice is not in the money. It's the value on you. And tie it with an expectation. Lord, they say my womb will not open. You have seen three of your sisters barring. You are there jumping up and down. And saying I am. They are, they are not barring because they are devils. They just do not understand the mystery of exemption. Koinonia is sitting upon this mystery. That's why you see us rising by His grace. Those who don't understand will just think, oh, these people are just lucky. There's no luck in this thing. Oh. There's no luck in this thing. You were engaging. There is a mystery. There is a mystery that exempts men from all of these vicissitudes of life. Please, I want you to believe it in the name of the Lord God of heaven and open up yourself because we are going to do some serious prayers. This night is not a night to just joke around. We came to pray. Within the few minutes we have to pray. I like you to pray. Remember we are exempting ourselves. Rise up on your feet and in the next five minutes. I want you to blast in tongues. As though one who is ready for exemption. Lord it can't continue like this. Lord my family cannot continue like this. Pray, pray. 
me lord jesus say it loud as and serious please be serious say lord jesus the yoke of suffering say the yoke of suffering the yoke of hardship upon my family and upon my life i command that it be lifted tonight lift your voice and pray Lift it out of your life. There is such a yoke upon families. Doesn't matter whether you are working or not. Doesn't matter whether you are in business or not. You keep blaming other people. Whereas the trouble is from you. Come on, believers, pray. Come on, believers, pray. So pray to the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. I want you to pray three major areas in your life where that exemption must show immediately. Listen, there are many areas. Choose three areas in your life and pray. This is an instruction. Pray it with your heart. Mention it. Lord, this unfruitfulness. This, 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 my family. Mention them if it's your finances and blast in tongues and say it must leave. It must leave. Prophesy. Prophesy. His ears are open. Prophesy. His ears are open. Prophesy. His ears are open. Prophesy. Exemption. In this year of triumph, I provoke it. In this year of triumph, I provoke it by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to pray and say, Lord, the attachment I have to money, the attachment I have to material things that will not let me sacrifice, take it away from my life. Please pray. You really need that separation. Carnality. 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 
attachment to money attachment to material things that will not allow you release resources the fear of lack the fear of resources finishing cause it cause it Malakata praskada barado shubrit ende prata la koto sobrinch karia Everything given to God multiplies. It does not diminish. Everything given to God multiplies. It does not diminish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want to challenge you to do something. This is not my culture, but I want to challenge you. Whatever seed you have, anything, maybe some financial resources, you can help somebody with it if you have more. It's not about, you always hear me say this, it's not, we're a very blessed ministry. I say it with all humility. We are a very, very, very blessed ministry. His grace has been faithful. So this is not about money, but if, if you have something that you can connect with, please, uh, no matter how small, no matter how little, connect with something. I want to pray a prayer. I want to pray a prayer. Connect with something. Help somebody. Don't sit down greedily saying, I don't know him. Take over. Over, I have come to the end of myself. Take over, Jehovah. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah! Sweetheart, come. I have come to the end of my Take over, take over. I have come to the end of my Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Finance department, somebody, a representative should stand for Koinonia in this prayer we are praying. Because we are also a ministry that believes the word. So we are not just telling people to do it. Stand on behalf of the ministry. We are all going to so I want to pray. And the seed shall bruise the head of the servant. I want to pray. Please, listen. Don't give anything foolishly. Don't give anything emotionally. Are we together? Don't just carry your phones and give emotionally and carry. Please make sure everything you do is based on understanding. You don't have a seed, you are not going to hell. Are we together? If you don't have a seed, you can touch, make contact with somebody who has a seed. That way at least it can help. It's not, it's not about money, brothers and sisters. This is one of the biggest mysteries behind the life of this man you see standing before you. My life is a fountain of blood that drips. You don't kill a dead man. A sacrifice already killed him. I have enjoyed the blessings of God in my life. I have seen doors open in strange ways. I have seen access Many people think it's because I'm a man of God. No. It's because of the principle of the world. I want to pray for you. Lord Jesus, we stand before you tonight in total faith. You are teaching us in this house the mystery of exemption. And Lord, you have taught us how kingdom service can exempt men. We are not doing this emotionally. 
we are not doing this to coerce ourselves but Lord in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we decree and declare that by this seed I prophesy upon lights upon destinies from tonight a dimension of breakthrough you have never seen I release it upon you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I declare that any charm any altar any pronouncement any yoke I don't care how long it has lingered around your life you have prayed it has refused to go you have fasted it has refused to go you even danced and it refused to go I prophesy may your seed answer tonight may your seed answer tonight Lord according to Psalms 50 verse 5 he said gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice I pray if I be sent of God I stand up God upon this altar in the name of Jesus as you are holding this seed I command judgment in the camp of the enemy judgment right now in the camp of the enemy may the fire fall on your seed 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 the Lord God that answers by fire the God of Elijah that descends upon the sacrifice in the name of Jesus as it burns this sacrifice it burns every altar as it burns this sacrifice it burns every charm it burns every pronouncement it burns every pronouncement therefore by this seed i prophesy be exempted from death be exempted from luck be exempted from struggling be exempted from this favor be exempted I don't care how it has been in your family by this seed I change the patterns tonight I change the patterns tonight I change the patterns tonight everything called dead in your life Everything that has refused to resurrect in your life. Everything keeping you at the same level. You are growing older but you are not moving. The truth is you are not making progress. The last three years you have been at the same place. I push you forward now. By the power of prophecy. I push you forward now. I push you forward now. Anyone here already marked for death? Cain said, This punishment is too much. I don't care what law you broke, I don't care what access you gave the devil. It was Cain that said, My punishment is too much. He said, Any man that sees me, any poverty that sees me, anything that sees me will slay me. And God said, I put a mark, I prophesy upon you right now let me tell you some of you will feel a physical hand a physical hand upon your forehead putting a mark in the name of jesus i invoke the covenant of this office that i stand upon i invoke the covenant of this office that i stand if i be a man of god at the count of three let that mark come upon men one two three take it take it that mark of exemption that mark 
of exemption over death, over poverty, over disfavor, over closed heavens. I shall put a separation between those that serve him and those that do not serve him. Where your personal faith has, has failed and is limited, where your prayer life is limited, I boost your resolve by the sacrifice upon this altar. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you receive results you know are bigger than you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore I declare, whatever close the heavens over you, so that nothing to celebrate comes. You are serving God, but there's nothing to say God has been faithful. I decree and declare, in the name of Jesus, before miracle service next week, as surely as the God of heaven lives, return with laughter. Return with strange laughter. Return with strange laughter. Hallelujah. I pray for every family represented here. Let me tell you, listen. Whenever you pray, never forget our families. Because many families are in big trouble. Big. It's only individuals that have been exempted. No matter how you rise, if things are not okay for your people, you are still in trouble. Are we together? Because their envy will kill you and throw you down. If out of a family of 15 people, you are the only one who rises alone, get set for trouble. You are ready to pay the school fees of 14 people. You are ready to take care of children that you cannot account for. Therefore, I pray, as the seed speaks for you, let it grow wings and extend to your family members. Let it grow wings and extend to your family members. In the name of Jesus Christ, uncommon favor uncommon unction uncommon anointing uncommon help receive it in the name of jesus oh, the lord let's lift our hands and bless his name jesus we exalt you you are mighty you are holy you are gracious we bless you lift your hands inside and outside and let's bless his name Zebra to Casuda Balika Faria Catus, Zende Brendo Gascala Pratia da Ossicate, Zecate Cos, Mande Catapara Catos as Igadiana Malato Sevrias, Ligue Brains Cataparianda Gabros, Zecate Cos Calabria Cacata, La Brianda Sipre de Catapala de Bush. Lord, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you for your faithfulness. We bless you for the testimonies. For your outreach charm in the midst of your people, we thank you. For blessings, for revelation, for confidence, for understanding, for the anointing, for the presence of the Holy Spirit, we thank you. Lega barato si adamalato shabra diskala bradisi. Kala brandi kaske bradish kala brosa la diha sabadu si adabatus. Bless you. You deserve my worship. You deserve my praise. You deserve my worship. You deserve my praise. You deserve my all. Lipa kasoda baruta sela bariondo skalabriasha. From everlasting to everlasting, we will praise you. I will praise you. You have proven yourself faithful again and again, and I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Ask the Lord to visit you tonight. Please, inside, outside, wherever you are, online, open your mouth and cry. Lord, I cry for revelation. I cry for revelation. 
concentrate, lift your voice, and in desperation cry. I will call upon the Lord. Worthy to be praised. I will call upon the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? I will magnify the Lord. Jesus, we declare tonight that our hearts are open because we believe in your power today, in your power to heal, your power to deliver your power to transform your power to open up a new dimension lord we thank you we thank you we decree and declare tonight that it is an extraordinary meeting in your presence we thank you for your power we thank you for light thank you for illumination thank you for understanding we receive the spirit of revelation grant us access to the mysteries of the kingdom Lord, let there be a performance. Let there be a performance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Good evening, everybody. God bless you. Please be seated. Turn to someone by your left and right and um, appreciate them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's amazing I kept thinking about the faithfulness of God this is November and God has proven again that he's reliable hallelujah that he can be trusted if you can trust a man that is mundane and can change in a moment I can like you today I hate you tomorrow and if you ask me why, I will say it's my choice. Is that true? I can hate you tomorrow and like you the next tomorrow. When you put your arm, your strength on men, it is so unreliable. The best of any man can change overnight. I can promise to give you more and say I can't remember. And just because my memory failed me, you will be punished. But the Bible says this word has been tried seven times. Listen carefully. It's not just a book that makes people spiritual. It's more than that. This is a compendium of the mind of Christ. Listen carefully. The Bible is a compendium of the ways of God. This is the ancient secret of an unbeatable life. The ancient secret behind strange results. Those who can be foolish enough, foolish enough, childlike enough, Brothers and sisters, this is the book that turns a poor man into levels of stupendous wealth. This is the book that turns a sinner and makes he a man of God out of him. Listen to me. This is the book that turns a man who cannot pay a rent of 10,000 
to now own an estate this is a book that can make a confused young man not knowing what to do with his life to become one who will govern kings and nations this book has led many we are not the first to hold it there are many ancient hands that held this book they were stupid enough to read everything there and they believed god they believed him that's the point it's not just reading it they saw it and they believed and god performed wonders in and through their life today we have come in the midst of history we are not starting anything new we just have followed them who through faith and patience when they taught us they taught us to trust the word and so we believe the word listen it may not yet look like everything is appearing but let me tell you the truth your destiny is too small to make the word of god fail for the first time no sir no sir no sir god used this word to humble the pride of wicked kings who were their confidence were built upon divinations that had been tried for a long time yet the word of god brought them to their knees if i trust any other thing in life and i do not trust the word of god i'm a foolish man praise the lord this is the secret i have a name that i call the bible i don't call it the bible it is my road map to accessing the mysteries of the kingdom i study the bible like an archaeologist like someone who has lost a treasure and is looking for it i keep saying it that the secret to the future is in the past when you can go behind the ancient part is not the part of a nomination the ancient part is a part where you open what did jacob see what did the psalmist see and if the spirit of revelation opens your eyes to see it ah brothers and sisters you create your own reality and walk in it as if satan does not exist this is what makes those who don't understand these mysteries they think that you know when men of god talk like this they are arrogant your reality is based on what your eyes have seen you must believe this your reality is based on what your eyes have seen it is important for you to understand please let me have your attention it is very important there is nothing that is built by magic there is nothing that is built by gimmicks this is it your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever see your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise i will sing i will sing of the wonders of your word i will sing out for joy I will sing of the wonders of your word and I will forever sing I will sing I will sing of the wonders of your word I will sing now for joy I will sing of the wonders of your word and I will forever sing. Listen. If I ask you to stand up now and I tell you what is the basis of your confidence? Somebody will say my father is coming out for election and some person in presidency promised him that this turn is his turn to eat that is complete nonsense it's human beings that vote somebody in and out and they can change their minds overnight another person will say his brother is the manager of xyz 
and because he's sitting on money he will bless him hear what the bible says he says for by the arm of flesh did you hear that by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail no man prevail you know i have become addicted to this book it's not because i'm a preacher jesus gave a parable i did not understand for many years he said the kingdom is like a man who is looking for a treasure the treasure is missing and then he lights a candle and goes around the room the treasure is not the word the treasure is the result you are looking for but he tells you how to look for it you light the candle you carry an empty candle you you keep roaming around an empty candle is a bible you brought from zondavan and you drop that's an empty candle but when the illumination of the spirit is upon it you carry it and move around when you find it it comes life to you then you communicate a dimension of results that will dumbfound principalities and powers let me tell you don't ever doubt a man whose confidence is based on something he has caught in the world you will be angry forever you will dream forever anything that is not a derivative of the word i don't trust it because i don't have control over it the bible says he upholds all things that includes my destiny he upholds all things by the word of his power we need to be a confident people listen not just believers confident people a depth of conviction and persuasion that is brought about by this the illumination of the spirit upon this word so you search for it criming scriptures is not just it's not the key to understand the word that's not just how it works many of us have memory of scripture which is not bad in itself except for the fact that it has no ability to empower you just like that it's like carrying granite seed and chucking it in your pocket do you have a harvest will it grow sir <clears throat> the word is the seed that's what jesus said the soil is your heart the rain is the holy spirit you can plant a seed and dry season will kill it into nothing the seed is not wrong but the anointing you see that the rain that comes upon the seed brothers and sisters please i want you to pay attention for every time god gives us the privilege to converge like this it is not the advancement of a man's agenda it is the progression of your accessing the mysteries that will cause you to command dominion let me tell you something there is a dimension of light that we are going to project to the world that will dumbfound principalities and powers yes a dimension of light young people will rise up with a level of strange prosperity that people will say no 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 are these guys scammers are they fraudsters we say no we found an ancient secret that can allow men to be blessed and focus on their assignment you see that you will rise with a strange level of the anointing that will make even her bodies to wonder and say i may have bodies but this is strange it will happen i am an archaeologist i search it i don't read the bible to finish it i read the bible to find <laughs> what i'm looking for and sometimes you can find one verse and stay there that's where the goal is so if you are all you are doing is just to finish i read psalms 5 today you came close to the gold mine and carelessness took you away and you go somewhere it is scripture but it's not the word of god the word of god is that part of scripture that gives you life <laughs> so many people brag religiously i started studying the bible by january and now i'm in revelations 20 to call the person and say how many treasures did you find even one one the only thing they find is an accolade that i search the scripture but someone will come with an honest heart and open one scripture you heard what that gentleman said he used the way the truth the life alone imagine what else we can find 
I've shared with you my vision years ago when I was caught up in the spirit and I saw a big gate. And that gate was made of small, small doors. You know, they were opening and closing and light was emitting from every one of them. And then I kept looking and I noticed it was zoomed to me and I saw scripture written on every door. And the doors were opening and closing and I was asking the Lord, what is the meaning of this? And the Lord said, every time you catch a revelation, the light component, that is the performer of that revelation. Anything you claim you have caught and you cannot bring it to the scene is a lie. You have not gotten it yet. Please pray and say, Lord, by your mercy, open my eyes today. This kind of prayer, you must add the mercy of God in it. Because what else will you say? By what? Lord, I cry by your mercy. Open my eyes to see. Sakatos kaparonda zigata paliata. You have spoken great things, but until my eyes see it, there is no possession. It says, as far as your eyes can see, are we praying? Shabraduka soda balakata frateke shibariada balada boko subaj. Open my eyes. Show me where the anointing for the next level is. Open my eyes. Show me where the key to my lifting is. Open my eyes. Show me where the river is in the desert. Open my eyes. Oh God, many people will be hearing many things, but show me my own. And the word of the Lord came. And the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord has always been around. The word of the Lord came. Let my word come. The word of the Lord came. Hallelujah. Listen, let me teach you something about the mercy of God. Every time you want to access the spirit of revelation, ask the Lord to release it by his mercy. There is no known formula I know for receiving the spirit of revelation. It is by the mercy and the grace of God that the eyes of a man be open. In scripture, the eyes of a man was open when he said, Thou son of David, have... He didn't say, Thou son of David, don't pass me by. He would have remained there crying till Jesus. That was the last time Jesus would pass Jericho. But I saw a relationship between the mercy of God and the spirit of revelation. Is Thou son of David, will I remain blind like this forever? Have. He never said, I want to walk. The walking is a subset of the mercy when illumination come. Or I want to see, I want. Mm -mm. Thou son of David, have mercy. It's a language God cannot pass by. No matter what you know to do at once, God hears mercy. He remembers the blood and he turns. What should I do for you? You didn't call me correctly. Oh, I hope you know. Yes, that's why I said mercy. I don't even know your name. I said son of David. Whether you are carpenter or Jesus, I added mercy to my confusion. Have mercy on me. That's how you can see someone who will be bragging around. I went to theological school and teaching nonsense and jargons. And someone will sit down and say, Lord, I came from the village. There was no light in our community. But Lord, I know that I've been seeing myself in dreams. Ministering and raising the, the dead. And watches. Can you open my eyes by your mercy and the spirit of revelation comes. Boom. One scripture. He may not be able to quote everything. One scripture. And with that scripture, you will do exploits. I'd like you to prepare your spirit. Because what I want to share with you tonight will bless you in no small way. People come to the house of God for many years, Jimmy. And you find out that they are not growing. How do you grow? There are two indices for growth. It's no confusion. Number one is the degree to which you are conforming experientially to the image of Christ. Number two, your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. If you are not understanding the precepts of the kingdom, you are not growing, sir. Whether they ordain you pastor, apostle, deacon, 
once you are not accessing the midst of the kingdom you are not growing it's as simple as that because that's how we reign in this kingdom on the strength of mysteries what do you know now that took away fear from you the fear you had in january what entered you that can give you confidence to look at it and say no way not again if your fear of january is still your fear of today you made the word of god unfruitful in your life someone entered this year wondering and right now the person is just laughing at the same situation and says it and no 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 that one that was that was last year's challenge you won't talk that nonsense with me again because you know what to do not bold face for nothing for jesus himself knew what to do my assignment in this ministry is that by the privilege of god's election and grace i will continue to show you what to do the result you desire versus the mystery that connects it that's my assignment to continue to show you that the kingdom is a compendium of possibilities but accessing them are predicated upon your knowledge of the mystery allocated for that result not the mystery available the mystery that is allocated you want to be blessed anything in the bible will not bless you anyway you have to find the one that is allocated for you you don't put rice in a pot and when it boils you lift it up and see beans you will see food but not beans if it's beans you want to cook you better find out one where to get beans two how to cook it correct so anything in the kingdom is not what you are looking for there are people who are blessed financially but this sickness will kill you you go to the hospital and treat it to refuse to come brothers and sisters there is an allocation you have to find us there are pastors who are so anointed they can raise the dead but you they will never have up to 30 members there is a mystery that keeps men people are not stupid to just come and sit down sit outside endure all kinds of things no sir my assignment is that by the agency of the spirit that i communicate to you the mysteries when you gather them together like this it's like a chain that connects you and heaven when you move in life the moment a challenge comes you smile because you understand the key to address it fear and ignorance and pain is a revelation of your bankruptcy of the understanding of the mystery that is tied to a result you are looking for there are things i used to fear years ago i don't fear them again i didn't cast out the spirit of fear understanding took me out of that realm you see that yes so please i want us to focus when you see us cry for the spirit of understanding th this thing is not just uh, even this anointing because you see many people especially ministers this is what we are all looking for anointing anointing is not just a generic oil that comes on your head this anointing you see has dynamics it doesn't just work anyhow how many people are you going to lay hands on on your life won't it kill you there is a system there are many means of transportation there is bicycle there is jet if you want to arrive lagos with a bicycle you may die before you arrive there that's how the dispensing of the anointing is you will meet people there are is, knowing the vehicle is not just enough you must understand the system of helping it reach people there's somebody seated outside another overflow there's somebody online in another nation how do you if all you know is just to lay hands on people how do you bless those who are far please pray before i start teaching one minute and say lord change my level insist please pray change my level paul said i went up by revelation show me something lord where i am is a revelation of my limited knowledge i take responsibility and i admit open my eyes satan can't be that powerful there's something i am not seeing Lord, I've been falling under the anointing, but that anointing has not healed one sick body. 
there is something I'm not getting. I have been sowing seeds, but the harvest has not been coming. What is blocking it? What more do I need to know? Hallelujah. Please sit down. <laughs> mm. The Bible says, when you read Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18, it says, having their understanding darkened, Paul is teaching here, and then he says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Ignorance alienates a man from the life of God, the experience of that Zoe life. Are we together now? That their understanding is darkened, that's the issue. Then he says that as a result of that darkened understanding, they are being alienated from the experience of the kingdom. So they may have semblance of what should be, but never enter into the experience of it. Most people are not in ignorance of what their life should be. They know what they should become, but the power to make it happen, that is a derivative of light. You know you should be more anointed than now. You know you should be more prosperous, but what is the limitation? It says, having their understanding darkened and then alienated from the life of God on the strength of the ignorance that is in them. I came angry in my spirit. Oh. We'll, be, we'll pray. I trust God for grace so that we'll finish fast and just have some few minutes to pray. First Peter 5.10 Just one scripture. There is a level of rest I began to perceive in my spirit that many of us were ordained by God to enter this year that we have not entered. And my assignment is to insist that these two months left, we must force something to happen. The Bible says, but the God of all grace, listen, who hath called us into eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered, the word suffered there is endured, endured with certain things a while, what will he do? Make you perfect, uh huh. Establish you, uh huh. Strengthen you, uh huh. Settle you, give you stability. These four things must happen to someone's life between this November and December. Listen, I really want you to believe me because believers are the ones who are possessors. Are we together? It says, after you have and you are put up with certain things for a while. Put up with poverty for a while. Put up with pain for a while. Put up with disappointment. Listen, it can't be forever. No, sir. A book has many pages. When you stay on one page forever, it's a curse. After you have suffered a while. The Bible says weeping and just for a night. If you cry to the next morning, cry in the afternoon cry till another night that crying has violated god's ordinances he allows people to only weep in the night after you have suffered for a while make you perfect establish you establish you then he says strengthen you all kinds of might financial might intellectual might then he says set to you said to you you are unmovable you have gotten to a level where you are not afraid uh -uh. the lord declared that this is a year of triumph i believe this so when god gave me this scripture it entered my spirit and the lord began to communicate to me and say son you have not hit my expectation for the year this triumph there is there is something there is there is a dimension of testimony that is not yet rampant here and there like rain people are getting it but it is in a ministry of thousands of people if only four people testify as a man of god not failed four over thousands is zero round it up is zero so there is a dimension 
the services that remain for this year will be very strangely prophetic services i tell you there are services meant at pushing people to force the reality of this world because brothers and sisters god cannot lie god cannot lie god cannot lie god cannot lie so the lord showed me this scripture and it really really blessed me tonight i'm going to teach very briefly on the mystery of divine intervention the mystery of divine intervention what is the spiritual secret behind calling god in the time of trouble and let him show up and bail you out what is the system in the kingdom that has been built where men when you need the help of god when your life is faced with an emergency and you need to call heaven brothers and sisters there are emergencies in our lives that require access to this system the mystery of divine intervention the Bible is full of near, near shame experiences where God got up, showed up for individuals, showed up for the nation of Israel. God turned the lives of people around overnight. Let me show you one scripture you will want to know. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Learn this scripture, add it to your spiritual arsenals. You will need it, I guarantee you. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 9. I want us to run uh, tonight. Read it with me please. One, two, read. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly from temptation or oppression or calamities and to reserve the unjust unto the day. The Lord knows how to exchange experiences that he looks as child and says for my name say come promise. That he looks at this person who calls upon his name and watches that this guy is getting into trouble he says god knows how to exchange people and carry this person out and drop the wicked for the punishment that is allocated for the righteous is called intervention there is a system in god listen please there is a system in god where god can plug men out of the fire Remember the story of the three Hebrew boys. The Bible says they found the furnace seven times. That those who threw them inside the furnace. Listen. They threw them inside the furnace and the heat killed them. And when four of them were inside. The king was not a believer. But the king had had strange encounters. And he saw a face in that fire he had seen in his dream. He said, I, I look and I see four people and the appearance of the fourth is like the son of god and the bible says they came out they could not even smell fire what of daniel that was thrown in the den of the lions because of his prayer life the bible says the lions were at peace with him and when he came out and they threw those other fellows the lions just devoured them brothers and sisters there is a mystery there is a hidden code of operation allocated to the saints in light to help them deliver them out of all the troubles and the vicissitudes that Satan puts. Because you see, your destiny is a function of many things. And sadly, it includes the lives of others and that also includes their carelessness. There are times you will get into things you necessarily did not cause. But you will suffer the consequence if you don't know how to exempt yourself. This is like an extension of the mystery of exemption. The mystery of divine intervention. Where men called upon God and God showed up and turned the lives of nations around. Turned the lives of individuals around. There is a way you call upon God for your personal prayer life. But brothers and sisters, there is a way you call upon God to intervene on a matter. That if he does not intervene, sometimes it may be that you are finished. There was a time death was killing people in Israel. Killing people. There was a way they called on God. Divine intervention is real. All through scripture we see that God is able to arise. Psalms 102 verse 13. It says, Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time in god's calendar there is a time oh 
there is a time to favor joshua selman there is a time to lift me and you see the bible says in amos chapter 3 verse 9 that god does not do anything but to reveal his secret to his servants the prophets so when god is about to do something in a territory he captures his thoughts in words in in similitudes in in all kinds of expressions communicates it to his servants to deliver to the people so that their faith will be connected to what he wants to do in the season and god has declared that it's a season of triumph i believe god it's not just a cliche that a man of god comes to move ministry forward no sir thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time the time to favor her the time to lift her the time to honor her for god's sake the time to wipe her tears the time for zion to say i am also the bride of a good man he says the time has come thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the set time is come many people want intervention intervention is the supernatural is a supernatural visitation over a man's situation that brings a radical transformation supernatural visitation of god supernatural visitation of god all of a sudden god steps in overnight and changes a man's situation overnight he says have you heard this proverb that a city was born in one day he said but as soon as zion travails in one day she shall put forth a son why do we need divine intervention because of our imperfection as human beings the first reason that necessitates divine intervention is that we are inaccurate as human beings our inaccuracy as human beings inaccuracy of understanding and obeying the precepts of god will necessitate god to create that provision are we together if a young man drinks and smokes and gets to a point where he now repents when his liver is quarter to die he has repented but the liver is still going to him. that gentleman doesn't just need a healing he needs a divine intervention when somebody repents in the prison and is supposed to say 80 years and he went there at 40 you see that he's going to die in the prison he needs divine intervention he's born again but he's in the prison our families are in desperate need for divine intervention is that true hmm. father not working mother not working 13 children 10 of them not working all of them graduates Haba. there is need for a strange intervention how about human agents that will sit on your destiny and vow and say for as long as we are here we fraternize with darkness to jeopardize your confidence about god i wish there was no such reality but brothers and sisters the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the wickedness that lies in our world i was talking with a young man on phone who sent me a text i think they worship one kind of idol and the father has been calling him i should come back there's something he's supposed to do the guy said he's not coming back after graduating from school they are asking you to come they will buff you put something on your head like a cap and one kind of ritual like this after that they will say you can go the guy said he's not coming and the man told him that that thing whatever it is will pursue him and look for him with his blood father the boy was speaking to me and i said let me tell you my brother if you go there and carry yourself and go and sit down under that whatever it is and they bath you with the blood of an animal and do those rituals uh -uh, god is able rather than wasting your time paying transport use the money and buy a book that reveals a mystery that you you keep the enemy at bay because what that shrine is trying to prevent him from will look for him oh.
if he doesn't have the mystery allocated he can make bold face and say i won't go but you will soon find out that it will happen to him first child dull second child very dull that child very dull and the person says, i'm brilliant my wife is brilliant and he sees that thing in a dream he say i i told you 10 years ago you would have rescued your children see don't reject darkness without having the light component don't just say i reject darkness every shine in my village god forbid it's a joke you must have the light component otherwise i tell you to hunt you and tear you into pieces there are forces of darkness we need divine intervention because of our inaccuracy we need divine intervention because listen the pace at which darkness attempts to destroy us versus our level of spiritual growth will require divine intervention at some point now look at me listen let me tell you something in the next 10 years there are things that i will know then that i don't know now but satan is plotting all kinds of schemes over my life based on the knowledge i need to know 10 years to come i need intervention by the mercy of god to give me victory before i enter that level of understanding if my victory is purely left to my level of understanding alone it means that i will be punished on many grounds before i come into that knowledge you need divine intervention is god speaking to someone here let me tell you this i am very outspoken about results I'm not a man of God that will lie to you and say results don't matter. It's a lie. It's a lie. If results don't matter, why do you go to work? Why do you wait for salary at the end of the month? Is that true? Results matter to God, matter to the devil, matter to everybody on earth. Whether we agree or not. Results are consolations to your Christian experience. Whilst it is true that we do not serve God just for results. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you. Even Jesus saw a fig tree that was receiving nourishment from the principle he programmed in the earth and was not yielding the result he caused it in annoyance so god wants us to bear fruit but there are keys that we must understand please look up there are many of us here and there are many of our family members here had they known that there is a mystery that controls divine intervention many tragedies we now weep over would not have happened listen carefully are we together now yes somebody looked at you and vowed and said pastor alpha i would destroy you we said no problem you wouldn't destroy me but you did not understand the component the revelation component and eventually it caught up with you i pray for a lady she probably may be following now online married loved her husband all of a sudden the husband just changed and became a, a very very funny man doesn't even stay in the same room with her and all of that and she she could not take it again and she called me you know i prayed with that lady and just this morning she sent me a text she said she woke up in the morning and just saw her husband sitting by her bed something brought him listen listen this is what I, you see men are slaves to the mysteries that control them you can program things like a bomb in the spirit and just go and watch it the same way i can put a bomb and i program blow by eight o'clock and then i just move somewhere and i'm laughing at everybody around here because it must blow except another agency superimposes it this is how you can program results in the realm of the spirit and watch like a movie as they unfold in the earth realm using things you call circumstances coincidences but you know that they are intentional results that were programmed by mysteries this is how i want your life to be that you can sit down and program growth program speed program breakthrough and watch everything like a movie and day after day you watch someone get up and say sorry elijah I, I i hope this is a new keyboard i bought for you and you laugh something was programmed your house that has been 10 years 
refuse to be completed you program something by understanding and someone comes to say ah, sam i don't know do you mind me complete this house and you will say yes because it was intentionally done you don't say i'm surprised you are coming i'm not surprised you were called that, are we together that's why when people die in the villages the harbalists don't cry have you ever seen them cry no something they programmed they program somebody from London and tell him where to come and die. When he dies, other people are crying at the guys as well. It's just to let you know that we are not children. You can program things. From the foundations of the earth, some things were programmed. And the intelligence of the father, he watched everything unfold through redemption. No power could stop it. Satan tried. He entered. He went when Jesus was fasting. Now came and entered Peter. Now came and entered. When he entered Judas, I'm sure Satan thought he was smart. Paul was watching it like a movie and saying, Yeah, yeah, had they known this? So this was the caricature that God was making out of Satan. He thought he was smart, but he was God was using him as a slave. Because you see, when you kill a man, according to scripture, his blood will haunt you. So God made sure it was Satan that killed Jesus. Go and read your Bible. Blood is a mystery. It remains on the head of the killer forever. Paul was watching this. Whether he was in a hole, in a cave, in prison, I don't know. But Paul was saying, ah, ah. Satan, couldn't you see? Jesus casted you out of Peter and left you in Judas. You didn't ask why. You just continued until you became a fool. That's the reason why when we invoke the blood, something really happens. It happens to whoever was the killer. When Cain killed Abel, blood cried against him. Cried against him. <laughs> I need divine intervention. You need divine intervention. Samaria needed divine intervention. Please sit down. They got to a point, scripture says, come, that they got to a point where women can you imagine brothers and sisters that you get to a point where you are not just eating goats you are not just eating clothes women you have your child i'm telling you there is a strange grace this year for fruitfulness and miracles in this ministry we have seen very dramatic manifestations and and all of that there are mothers all around with their children moving right and center now imagine Pastor Alphas, that little baby. Imagine Annie holding this her child and saying, look, there is so much poverty. Pastor Alpha travels somewhere to go and look for food. And she liasses with a Jimmy's wife. Two of them, they carry Jael and carry David. And two of them stand and agree. And they say, we are eating Jael this night. You eat it. What sort of hunger makes you eat a whole human being? Now watch this. Then the Bible says they ate the first one. Then the next day, it was the turn to eat the other one. And the mother said no. And the woman said no. You ate my child. Listen, while that confusion was happening, the king started passing. And they went. They said, king, you can't leave us like this. And when all of that happened, the king said, look for Elisha for me. Look for Elisha for me because he had that Elijah program famine. He said, I'm sure Elisha has a hand in this trouble. Go and look for this. This, this guy was mentored by the troublemaker of Israel. Go and look for Elisha. Watch this. While all of this suffering was happening, the Bible says Elisha and the sons of the prophet were, he didn't say they were hungry. When he saw the king coming, he said, this son of a murderer wants to now come and kill me. Oh, yeah, you push, you stop him. And because of that, it's okay now. It's called my attention. Let me casually do something about what is killing a nation. By this time, Kabakoto Sakataya. By this time, tomorrow. By this time, tomorrow. Listen, it didn't tell you how it will happen. If you understand the superiority of the realm of the spirit, you will never ask how results manifest. 
You see, let me tell you something. When people argue and say, how did this thing happen? They are not wise. The raw materials that create the earth are resident within the realm of the spirit. He said, by this time tomorrow, by this time, I'm hurrying up, I would have given you scriptures, but I really want us to pray. That by this time tomorrow, they call, they, please help them. This will cause this and that. And then a foolish man, like many doubters that insult men of God, he said, what are you saying? I mean, I'm the minister of this and that. I read this and that. Even if the windows, hey, yeah. he knew that much that heaven had a window. With what did they build the window? He never asked. If God will open the window, will these things be? And the prophet said me, you will see it all. But they will kill you in front of that breakthrough. Then look at how the miracle happened. The prophecy had been programmed in the spirit. Now it is up to the word. This is where the wisdom of God starts. It starts searching for scenarios in the earth that can bring what is in the spirit to manifest. Are you seeing how prophecy comes to pass? Watch this. Look at this. Let me teach you something. Watch this. Look at me and learn. If I prophesy to you, Emeka, and say by tomorrow, if it is really by the spirit, I say by tomorrow, money is coming to your account. I have placed that word in the spirit. Hold on. The word manifests by the wisdom of the spirit. Let me tell you what the wisdom of the spirit is. It will start searching the earth to look for the scenario on earth that is capable of bringing that word down. Then connect it to the individual. Listen. The wisdom of God will move to a rich man. If it's not open, it will move to somebody who God had instructed to. So if it will keep moving like that. That's how the anointing got to Mary to be the mother of Jesus. The Bible never said the name of the mother of Jesus will be Mary. The prophecy started searching for a virgin. When he found one and she said, I'm available, he brought her out. Listen. There are too many activities on earth that can mirror what is happening in the heavens. For God to be bankrupt in terms of manifestation. When God says I want to bless you. He is already speaking to millions of people to sow. It's just that he has not told them who to sow. The wisdom of God can just connect one of them. You see how prophecy works. I'm helping your faith. So that when God says I will do this. You now sit with your limited mind. And say I only know Uncle A and B. And I already know a hey, promise you will never see me. And God is saying, No, we are talking about the wisdom of the Creator. Look at what happened. Four lepers, everybody say, Four lepers. Four lepers were sitting quietly, and the wisdom of God, the spirit of wisdom, because the word of God must come to pass. The man of God had declared it, and the, the anointing came on the lepers. They thought they were just tired. But they didn't know that at that point they were under the influence of a man of God. And the word started programming that result. They say, Why sit here till we die? Even that talk was by the Spirit. They thought they were gisting. And they said, Look, let's just get up and go to the camp of our enemies and tell them, Kill us, but let's eat first. The Bible says, The moment they began to go, God changed their people. They began to hear the sounds of chariots. And all of, listen, were they not warriors? Is it not fight they fought to get those things? Couldn't they fight again? When God wants to bless you, he will move your enemy in a way that you will not even know how things happen. I know I should not graduate, but there is a mystery that can be programmed. A man is watching your result. 37 over 50 you need 50 something comes on him and he right and he does not even know listen listen people some people hear the testimony of some of our some of the people who wrote jam here that jam changes from 100 and something to two and you hear them talking nonsense talking stupid things and saying how can it happen and i said look, look at this foolishness how does a boil come out of your stomach where did the mass accumulate from that projected out did any part of your body reduce for it to come out 
didn't ask where it came from. Then when it disappears, you say, where did it go to? You see how we think? Son of man, can these bones live again? Immediately, oh, not after 10 years, not gradually. Can these bones live again? He said, God, I've seen many miracles, but I've not seen this type. That a dry bone is not like a dead human being. I believe in raising the dead, but dry bones? And he said, okay, I want to show you something. That when I show up, I compress time and make things happen. And he said, prophesy. Prophesy. And things began to shift. Listen, it is too late when mysteries have been programmed in the spirit. Take it from me. The moment a man programs something in the spirit, you better find a way of countering it in the spirit. Otherwise, it must manifest. <laughs> this is what Habalists do. They conjure things. They conjure spirits. And then they tell the person, go, it is done. At the point they said, go, it is done. He didn't feel anything. Oh. Go. We shall be, we put your husband in a bottle and you saw it. Go, it is done. The woman will go home and still see her arrogant husband come back. And she'll be laughing. He's already in a bottle. Two days later, physical things start happening in the earth to force him to confirm to what has been programmed. After one week, the man becomes a toy to her because the realm of the spirit must. So you look at a woman who is barren. It may look like you just touched her stomach, but it's more than that. Mysteries were programmed in the spirit. But he said, how shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? He says, the power of the highest. Brothers and sisters, I came to prophesy to someone. It will be a quick walk. Oh. It will be a quick walk. It will be a quick walk. I tell you, except it's not the God. I told you that the remaining services, don't miss them. They will be, help them please. They will be strongly prophetic services. Strongly prophetic services. It will be a quick walk. There is a mystery that can push men. False prophecy, push men. It is possible. That in one day, Something can happen to you and you will turn and say, God, I'm sorry for doubting you. When it was time for the animals to enter the ark of Noah, he didn't call one of them. Something was manipulated in the spirit. All the animals started lining up. Regardless of their hostility, they lined up and came quietly. Listen, let me tell you something. The day I learned the vanity of the physical realm compared to the spiritual realm i stopped wasting my time about physical things Tr trust me i really mean it i saw how helpless the physical realm is that a body without a spirit is dead i stopped wasting my time those who do business do it in the spirit realm they program things in the spirit realm and just watch like strangers how things manifest you program favor and you come and see strangers bringing blessings and people say how is it happening you see what is happening in this ministry submit to you it was programmed it's not a coincidence something took you from where you were and brought you here it's not just that you like a man no it's a mystery that is the same thing that will put a baby in the barren womb it's not when a man meets his wife that she gets pregnant to a man meets his wife to give the child physical form do you believe what I'm saying because let me tell you something one of the things we are going to do tonight is to change some things there are results that are wrong something programmed it it may be our ignorance it may be something i bring you a message of hope the realm of the spirit is still there that means there is still an ability to access it please sit down
I'm just trying to compose myself. My spirit is boiling this night. Listen. Listen. I have experimented this thing too many times. Too many times. Too many times. You can program favor. You can program breakthrough. Listen. You can program judgment on the wicked. You can program speed. The word of God is an instrument of creation. You can create realities that were not there. When you hear people testify, it's not like the testimony was waiting somewhere. A word created it. When you are programming mysteries, you don't attach a face to it. The wisdom of God will create the actors of that mystery in the physical realm. You don't say, God bless me through my uncle. Uh -uh. I have accessed the principles that brings the blessing. It is God that will start sourcing for the men that will act the movie that will bring your breakthrough. He can use a donkey. He can use stone. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is that let it come. Are we together? Yes. Ah, I tell you, believe me, brothers and sisters, when I tell you there are more angels on this ground than people sitting. There are more angels, angelic presence. I don't know if it's because of what I'm teaching tonight, but I prayed for strange intervention angelic interventions and the Lord is just opening my eyes and I'm seeing that there are numerous angels battalions of angels every time God opens do you know why when I speak like this people start manifesting under the anointing because you see when you are open to the realm of the spirit portal is created immediately do you understand and when that portal is created there must be an effect remember when Paul Saul now saw Jesus those there did not see but there was an effect from the realm of the spirit I'm explaining it because it's nothing strange but I stand and I see angels inside outside like this i'm even on that fence you are seeing i'm seeing all kinds of things happening and this is by the power of the spirit i believe that not all the angels are the same they are according to their ranking and their functions according to what kind of intervention must manifest because see our challenges are not the same i know some of you may not have issues but let me tell you there are people the issues you have require recovery restoration judgment on somebody so there are angels that are allocated for that kind of thing was he not an angel that used hailstone and killed hundreds of thousands of people overnight please help them Zepreketo sadabala ko sambriata kata, jegedeketo ko subriata, jebres kata barota sabala kos, leketa ko sabarote sabash, enda kato kata bakata lekato sedekedi, jigeto skiba takaria, mande katos. I release angels, strange ministry of intervention, brakoto soto keta barata, zegete kata. By the authority of the Most High, angelic interventions over lives and families, it must end tonight. In the name of Jesus, it's the year of triumph. It must end tonight. Thou shall arise, thou shall arise, thou shall arise, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. Thou shall arise. God is arising over a family. God is arising over a family. Hallelujah.
Listen, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. You see, Ba, when you come before God's presence, the Bible tells us that upon Mount Zion many things happen. The innumerable company of angels. These things are not fables. The Bible is not a book for religious people. It is life. It is true. It is our own belief that has made it look like a storybook. That you come to his presence and there is a strange intervention. I say it again in the name of Jesus. As I begin to teach, I've not finished. But in Jesus name I release the ministry of angels. I release the ministry of angels. That whilst the teaching is going on, let intervention start. In the name of Jesus Christ. Strange interventions. Strange interventions. Please sit down if you can. Please help those outside. Very quickly, I will give us four keys. Let's use ten minutes. Sorry, I will not be explaining it in depth. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I feel the spirit of prayer here. There are four keys to provoking divine intervention. Every time you are in a situation where you need the help of heaven urgently, do these four things. And you will change the tides in a way that will surprise you. Listen, brothers and sisters, as you learn these mysteries, please use them. Don't be too big to use them. Be childlike and apply them. You will be surprised. These are not cunningly divine fables. These are things that I do myself. They are not necessarily things I'm just telling you just for, for, you know, just the sake of it. The first thing to do when you are in need of strange intervention is engage in the ministry of prayer. Number one. Please quickly. Prayer. I will give you two scriptures and then we will we'll be able to look at two. Write it down, please. Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11. Talks about Peter. Don't, don't project it. I just want to hurry up. In Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11, the Bible tells us how that James was caught by Herod. He was beheaded. And when it pleased the Jews, he now caught Peter and locked him. And then the Bible says the brethren began to pray. Whilst they began to pray, an angel came into the prison, brought Peter out. Peter even thought he was having a vision until he took him out and then peter was free we see that prayer was part of the instruments that were used was used to bring strange and divine intervention acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11 please write this down acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34 it's a long reading don't project it just write it down acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34 this was um a scenario where Paul casted out the demon from the lady that was using divination to prophesy. And then the people got angry and they mobbed them. You know, and then the Bible says that they chained them and they were kept under the custody of a jailer. Then the Bible says Paul and Silas prayed and they sang. And the Bible says everyone in the prison heard them. All of a sudden there was an earthquake. And then the Bible says the things broke and all doors open. I like that. All doors. It didn't say some doors. When the chain broke, all doors. The doors of the prison of other people connected to them also open. All doors open. Prayer can open doors. James chapter 5 verse 13. Maybe you can project that. He said, is any of you afflicted? Let him pray. Prayer is the... Re biblical recommendation for affliction if any of you afflicted he said let him pray so whenever you are afflicted the key is to pray you may not know what to do i'm teaching you what to do now but regardless of what the situation is pray especially engaging in the spirit the most the most sound way to engage warfare prayers especially is to pray in the spirit first as you pray in the spirit the holy spirit begins to construct the scriptures in your mind you will not utter them just as words you will utter them as prophecies that's what we leave to bring the result so the first key is not just to start talking uh, you take out time and pray in the spirit that's why it is important 
important to be filled with the Holy Ghost with a clear evidence of praying in tongues. It's not a phenomenon for Pentecostals. There is a dimension of victory you will never be able to command. Are we blessed? Is any among you afflicted? Has any of you received a bad report? Has any of you been told that you have so, so, so time to live? Has any strange spirit appeared to anybody and said you will not see Christmas so when others are rejoicing, don't join them? The key is not to get up and cry. Has any stranger come to you while you sleep and try to molest you and you just got up and said this thing has come again? No, sir. Has the door floor closed towards you? So the people who used to help you suddenly have changed. The people who used to like you suddenly have changed. The doors that used to bring you blessings have changed. Something is suddenly happening to your spiritual life. Prayer zero. Word life zero. You need an intervention. Prayer. The scripture I want us to read now is Psalms 18. Never forget this scripture. It's one of the arsenals that I have for my personal... Um, it's a scripture that has blessed me. I have prayed this scripture. If, if this scripture was a shoe, by now I would have, maybe the soul would have eaten into pieces. I'm giving you a piece of my secret place. Psalm 18. Don't ever forget that scripture. Don't ever forget it for as long as you live. If you are a leader going far, this is a chief tool that you need. We are going to read from verse 1 to 6. Then I'll pick for you the verses we are reading. It's a long verse. Ready? Please give it to us. One to six. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Listen. My God, my strength in whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord. I will do what? Call upon the Lord in prayer who is worthy to be praised. So, by calling upon him, shall I be saved from my enemies. Verse 4. The sorrows of death compass me. This is a man in trouble. And the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compass me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, hallelujah, I didn't discuss it with people who cannot help me. I called upon the Lord and cried upon unto my God. He heard my voice from out of his temple. And my cry came before him. Even to where? Even to his ears. There is a kind of cry that enters the ears of the mighty God. Let's jump to verse 14, then to 17, then 40 to 45. It's a quick reading. Verse 14. Yea, he sent out his arrows. God has arrows. So, hey, look up. I learned this. I was checking arrows. You know, arrows that fly by day. And then I found out that it's not only the devil. God, the Bible says, yea, this is him intervening for me. These are part of the forces from his cabinet of judgment that he can release. He says he sent out his arrows and scattered them. And he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. 17. Please give us 17. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. Verse 40. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemy, that I may destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. 42. We are really reading to 48. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind, and did cast them out of the dirt in their streets. 43. Oh dear, media. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of my people, and thou hast made me the head of the hidden. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. Pastor, you need this for your ministry. 
when you open a branch in a locality that you don't know there are people who need to come out as soon as they hear of me they shall obey me the strangers shall submit themselves to me 45 verse 45 the strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places now 47 to 48 is a scripture i don't want you to ever forget ready go ahead give us well go to 47 go to 47 it is god that avenged me and subdued the people under me who did it who did it he says it is god that avenged me and subdued the people under me 48 he delivered me from my enemies yea thou lifted me up above those that rise up against me thou hast delivered me from the violent man divine intervention as a man of god there are wicked forces day and night to destroy you as a leader there are wicked forces but when you catch this and catch the revelation you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death and the lord will be with you mysteriously you will not travel and sit down and be shaking will a car jam me will it break my leg will it break my head no sir rest and quietness on the strength of scripture everybody say prayer we need to learn how to call upon the lord listen do you know most people don't know how to call upon the lord they know how to lament hey oh you are not calling upon the lord you are shouting a lamentation a, a strategy for lamentation that you inherited he said unto thee oh lord do i lift up my soul oh my god let me not be ashamed though let not my enemies triumph over me there is a way you can pray with god sometimes like anna you can't even shout it's not something you you just lie down and say oh god oh god deliver me from the shame of the wicked there are enemies that are waiting to see you fail so that it will be their prophecy fulfilled lord confound their their counsel and god will say it got to my ear i had it i'm on my way coming prayer number two the second key when you want to activate the mystery of divine intervention is to engage praise with understanding praise 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 as an instrument of warfare and praise as an instrument of faith praise as an instrument of warfare but that you are blessing him in advance listen this revelation is fast becoming a national anthem in the body of christ people are suddenly coming to the realization that praise can work wonders you know people don't know why the presence of god is still mighty in africa it's because africa is a praising continent yes yes sir yes sir they laugh at us and think that when we are dancing is nonsense praise is a mystery you want to turn around your situation no matter what you do if you have not praised there is no lord believe me lord give us understanding psalm 22 verse 3 it says thou art holy thou that inhabitest the praise of zion God makes the praise of men his habitation. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Joshua Selman. Listen, I've taught us how to praise. You don't praise God without dancing. That, that is nonsense. You are, you are singing a national anthem. It's when you are reciting national anthem that you stand and put your hand on your chest. Moving your body is not a sign of, it's not, you are not, you have problems. You can cry but still praise. Are we together? It's, this is a, it's a powerful mystery I want you to learn. Our father Bishop David Oedeko, when he almost had a few weeks ago, he almost had a plane crash that would have taken his life. As soon as that happened, they declared praise. I said, oh dear 
spiritual intelligence let me tell you what other people would have done they would have organized a cocktail party and said you know we and the devil, the devil said that i'm coming back praise praise is one of the most powerful ways to disgrace the devil because you see let me tell you one of depression is the absence of laughter and joy satan uses when people are about to die there are few people who die smiling most people are depressed then they keep quiet it says that the joy of the lord shall be your strength so when there is no joy your spirit becomes broken and the bible says a broken spirit dry yet the bones you don't praise god when things are going well you praise god to make them go well listen you don't praise god when when things are going well and you praise god it's called thanksgiving thanksgiving is the dance you give and the testimony you give when things have manifested but before they manifested it's called perfected praise praise with understanding lord you are so good you are worthy of all my praise lord you are so good you are exalted as the lord most high hold on listen let me tell you what satan will tell you the moment you sing that he will tell you is it not your sister that just died is it not five carryovers we are seeing oh god did they not just sack you ah the gentleman that has been promising to marry you is it not by 8 a.m this morning he says it's not doing again the devil brings it because he knows you see satan knows that we function in the realm of the flesh the senses are we together now so he brings things that resonate with your senses when you see them you are now depressed but that's the time anytime you are praising god satan says why are you praising him say no reason i'm praising him to create my testimony you see that listen corporate dancing and praising is good but you must learn to do this thing alone if it means you trusting god to get one small room for yourself for the purpose of praise is what it all is what it reserve the forty thousand for shoes and use it to pay for a small room put worship wake up in the night because there is personally me i don't have time to do that dance and praise in the afternoon all kinds of calls distracting in the night oh dear oh dear ask god what i do in the night yes yes sometimes i carry koinonia documents drop it on the ground dance before it and shame the devil i carry my phone put it there not dancing before them i say lord you are great i dance before you people are coming from everywhere rain or no rain publicity or no publicity and god says you are doing this for me i say lord who else will i do it for and you are celebrating him lord you are faithful and you are worshiping him you are sweating like a fool and while you are doing that god is dispatching angels okay make sure you wake that guy to transfer money to his account that hundred thousand i gave you i didn't tell you who to send it to send it to him oh his mother is at home for giving birth to him send an angel there too and my innocent mother is lying down she'll wake up in the morning and say mama where are you say who are you say just come take my praise this our big manism has cheated us beyond imagination this pride that you don't have results and you are still talking you know ah I, how can okay i agree that you can't you think i can dance look at me you think no 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 god i don't have that gift of dancing it's not a competition this is your destiny this is breakthrough if a thief puts a gun and says you should dance won't you do something some of us when we were in the world you know the kind of dance demonic satanic dance that you did for the devil for free that destroyed you you got drunk dancing it a spirit entered you dancing it 
I'm not saying you should dance all kinds of nonsense dance in the house of God, but I'm saying that there are times you need to learn to sing and dance alone. With listen, listen, most people dance. You can turn your dancing time to a nightclub, and God will look at you and say you are wasting your time. It is the revelation that makes the singing and the dancing profitable. Don't just move your body around just because you are happy. That, that's that's entertainment. Brothers and sisters, there is the kind of dance that you dance with tears in your eyes. But you are doing it with understanding. Don't think you will only always be laughing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. No job for you. No job for your wife. No job for your five children. They are all graduates. You have prayed, oh, nothing happened. Brothers and sisters, try singing and celebrating God. Everyone in their room rejoicing. Jesus, you are full. And you are just dancing. Let me tell you what will happen. The Lord will start bringing testimonies. Remember when a cow would have killed you in 1995. And you say, Lord, I remember. Oh, and you start dancing it. You are, you are compressing doubt because something is about to be created. You would dance and dance till you fall under the anointing there and get up and clean yourself and be tired and sleep and wake up and drag yourself. Brothers and sisters, you have programmed something in the spirit. You will get up in the morning and just dress and say, Father, thank you. And get a phone call. Who is this? I'm seeing a document that has been here four years on my table. Who are you? So I finished for what did you read? Anyway, it's not what you read. Where are you? Come quickly. I like you. Ha! You just know that praise is working. Praise is working. Let the people praise me. Psalm 67, verse 5 to 7. Let the people praise me. It's an instruction. The earth has been programmed to deliver certain results, but let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Verse 6. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our God, shall bless us. You can stop there. Zephaniah. It may be difficult for some of us to find, but just write. Media, please give it to us. Zephaniah chapter 3. Let's read 14 to 20. I hope we can... Just quickly hurry up. Zephaniah. Chapter 3. Zephaniah. Chapter 3 and verse 14. We are reading to verse 20. Listen. It says, Sing, O daughter of Zion. It's not talking about a lady. It's talking about human beings. You must read the Bible prophetically. When it says daughter, find out what it means. There are times in the Bible all people are sons. There are times all people are daughters. Are we together? So don't think he's talking to ladies. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart. O daughter of Jerusalem. We are reading to verse 20. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. And has cast out thine enemy, the king of Israel. Even the Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not. And to Zion, let not thy hands be slack. We are reading to verse 20. Give us 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with what? Singing. Singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden verse 19 behold at that time i will undo all that afflicts thee and i will save her that halted and gather her that was driven out i will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame hmm. at that time I will bring you again even in the time that I will gather you for I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes say the Lord you read that scripture and say Lord whether you understand it or not I am dancing with this revelation that you are turning something I can see everything 
So I don't have a house, find a tree, find somewhere. It is a place that will give you a house, my brother. I'm staying with neighbors, I don't want to disturb them. Find somewhere behind one rock. You don't have to shout and disturb the neighborhood, just engage in praise. Glorify God. You may be tired, but it's called a sacrifice of praise, brothers and sisters. Do this and see how things will turn in your life. There's nothing the devil can do with someone who is full of joy and glory. This gloominess that you see people tie their face around, it doesn't bring breakthrough. It adds to your sorrow. You loosen up and say, Father, you are faithful. You are tying your face around and people say, why are you? Why should I not tie my face? Why will you pay my rent for me? My brother, it's praise that will pay that rent. So you turn everything and rejoice. Let me tell you what many people will say who see you engaging this. <laughs> they say, don't mind all these men of God. They are turning you people to be stupid. You see that? But when you meet them for rent, they won't give you. If you want God's result, follow his methods. Number three, quickly. The third key to activating the mystery of divine intervention is called seed faith. Say after me, seed faith. Listen, I know that giving has been abused. Listen carefully, please. Outside, online, listen carefully. I know that giving has largely been abused because it has looked like some manipulation and journalists and bloggers have not done justice because they have mixed everything and made it look like giving and sacrifice is some gimmicks to corner money and give a man of God. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Something I do all the time, including today. Every time you are in a situation, listen please. Every time you are in a situation that only God can step in with understanding, haven't prayed, package a seed, speak to that seed and give it an instruction. And sow that seed, release. If you just sow money, it's bribery, it's not the money, revelation. He said, I'm sure God is full of the potent power of seed faith. Connecting your faith with a seed and a sacrifice to provoke God's hand for intervention. I've done it countless times on behalf of this ministry. I've done it countless times on behalf of myself, my family, my friends, people I love. Seeds. The seed that is in your hand can create a destiny that will surprise you if you know what to do with it. Please listen to me. Don't think I'm asking you to give me money. No. There are people who when they hear this, they just frown their face. Not at all. Not at all. God has been faithful to me. Are we together? Listen. There are people who have turned their lives around overnight. If there is one thing I know in my little walk with God, is that your seed can bruise the head of the serpent. I promise you. I have seen people quarter to shame. Everything was against them. It was obvious they are finished. And they used their seed and turned the hands of life in a way that you cannot imagine. My life is full of sacrifices. Psalm 126, don't turn there. Verse 1 to 6, you write it. That when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, He said we were like them that dream. The first six verses, the, la the sixth verse ends by saying, they that sow in tears. The whole verses are connected. Verse six is connected to verse one. God turning away the captivity of Zion like a dream. He says that they that sow in tears will reap 
in joy. He that weepeth, bearing precious seeds, the Bible says, shall doubtless return rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. It's not every seed. To be cheerful does not mean to laugh. To be cheerful means that there be a merriment in your heart. There are some times you will cry for the seeds you sow. Hallelujah. Someone came over to my place today and the Lord instructed him to bring me a seed. And quite a very serious seed. Just, you know, a military officer just came, dropped the seed. And when I saw it, the seed was in dollars. I said, wow, in this recession, this seed. And the Lord told me, no, 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 make sure you don't touch it. This is your seed for something. And the Lord told me, I started dancing. I said, thank you, Jesus. This is it. When God gives you seed to sow, it's intervention. Of Getting the seed to sow is an act of God's mercy. That you say, Lord, I must provoke this, but I have no seed. Then he gives seed to the sower. Those who know only know how to eat anything plus their destiny, they keep getting bread. But those who want to create a future. Brothers and sisters, I have created realities in my life with seeds. I believe in the power of a seed. Listen, don't let people, because of their cynicism, the imbalance when a man creates an imbalance in scripture you don't avoid that truth because it has been abused you bring it to context and teach people brothers and sisters a seed can change your life believe me i have done crazy things in my life i thank god that is only god that reveals that that is only god that knows the heart of men there are things if i tell you that i have done with seeds some of you you are not related to me but you will be angry you will remove your shoe and stone me with it and say you are very stupid in this recession seeds there was a year i've shared it again and again that god gave us an instruction we were just resuming koinonia and god gave an instruction he said so everything 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 i don't mean small so everything let it go i said thank you jesus you are ready to lift us that is revelation by faith abel offered you offer by faith you don't offer by by tricks and all kinds of no 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 and we release it brothers and sisters it didn't reach seven days seven days more than ten times that amount seeds i'm not saying you should give carelessly no but brothers and sisters the seed that is in your hands can silence a spirit that has destroyed your destiny for years nobody is moving forward in your family you are just sitting down and god is saying look you have to provoke heavens with a sacrifice one day you get angry and say lord i am tired of this anna did not have money to give but she said lord let's do it give me the child i've given the child already as a seed and god said it's a done deal there was a king in the bible who they wanted to slaughter and defeat it was very clear the nation of israel would defeat them and he carried his son his future and slew the child the bible says an indignation rose up to heaven battle ended when god wanted to redeem man it was an issue of urgency God carried Jesus, the lamb upon the throne, slew him. Jesus cried and God said, that's not the issue. Man must be saved. This greed over the little we have is what has destroyed us. Get used to money leaving you to go and wait for you in your future. Get used to it. You may not have a seed but brothers and sisters let me tell you there are many ways to give money is not the only seed it's just the seed that can easily be exchanged that's why there are times that people have made radical sacrifices do you believe what i'm teaching you principles of divine intervention trace your life 
at the moment where God gave you specific instructions that you did things that almost brought tears from your eyes and watch what happened you just did not study it enough to know how to keep it going mm. I hardly share my testimonies I stopped because I found out that it annoys a lot of people and I'm not ready to attract unnecessary um, you know people once they hear preachers talk there are people who just get angry just like that it's nonsense brothers and sisters learn to sow seeds but the most powerful part of sowing seeds is to give them instructions this is the mistake many of us have been making you package a seed some of you come and join the line apostle here is a seed i'm sowing i always ask people what is this for and if you say for nothing just i just feel like seeing you that's a donation that's a donation brothers and sisters all seeds are not the same there is a seed you give to the poor there is something it does to you there is a seed that you give to widows and orphans there is a kind of result there is a seed you put on the ground because you are tired of where you are if the word of god were a lie i would have died since because the risk i've taken with this word it would have killed me since but i believe him i believe him when i saw that seed today i was happy the joy that filled my heart i await the testimony that comes from it wanting a harvest that you have not scheduled to sowing is a waste of time is imagine now somebody who didn't go to the farm he has a land somewhere he just carries his wife and his children and carries a truck and he goes to an empty place you will find wheat there but whoever saw January, February down to April is smiling right now because he knows it's harvest time. Brothers and sisters, I pray for us. May God kill greed from our life. This attachment to money, listen. This many people think wealthy people are the ones who are attached to money. It's a lie. Wealthy people in the kingdom have become wealthy because they have conquered it. Your seed is an instrument that creates your future. Hallelujah. Learn to release seeds. Learn to release seeds. Learn to release seeds. I'll never forget a gentleman who sent me a text. He sowed a seed. I remember it was when he sent me the text. Truly speaking, I remember. They sowed seeds and I was opening the envelopes. Most times it takes, it honestly takes a while. Maybe some days before I even open the envelope to see what is there and pray on it. And I opened the envelope and I saw five naira and a letter. The guy said, This five naira was his Isaac. I know you will laugh and say, Hey, this stupid boy. No. I respected that because that, that thing I knew would create a harvest. And the guy, I opened it and wrote some things like that. And then I just felt led to pray for him. Do you know it didn't reach two weeks? The guy sent me a text. And said, I have never in my life seen favor like this. Five naira. It's not about the money. It's about the heart. Somebody was tired of where. How many jobless people have not sown anything. And they keep moving around with CV. What must tell you the devil is fighting you? You carry a seed and say, God, please. I'm married with three children. No job. This mockery must end. I drop this and I tie it to my job. And then praise around that seed. Praise around the seed. And your brothers and sisters say, so this is what they are teaching you. This is how these stupid men of God keep eating your money. And all of a sudden, the heaven opens. Breakthrough upon breakthrough. You are praying to buy land. Oh Lord, please give me two million naira to buy land. I now have 150,000. Just top it up for me. And God says, you mustn't buy it. Just learn. Let me show you. And all of a sudden, someone stands up and blesses you. I think it was you, Jimmy. I was showing you. Was it yesterday? I was showing him the documents of a property that was given to me recently. I said, God, what is this? What is this? For as long as you sow, whether you like it or not, 
The law is that you must reap. So if you have not sown anything, stop, stop saying, God, where is my harvest? And he said, what, what are you saying? A woman who does not take in, is she expecting a child? No, sir. No, sir. She do seasons of breakthrough in your life. Your seed is a weapon. Not just your prayer. Your seed is a weapon. Your seed is a weapon. One mama called me one time. I was led by God. Honestly, I felt so... I didn't know how to talk to her because she sounded like an elderly woman. And she was praying for divine financial intervention. I said, Mama, please, I want you to sow a seed. Not to me. I, I, did, I would never have the effrontery to tell that woman to sow into my life. I'm sure that woman will be older than my mother. I said, please, try. Connect with a seed. And the woman said she doesn't have anything. I said, it's not true, Mama. There is something you have. What do you do? She said she farms yam. I say carry four or five tubers of yam. Find any church. I said which church is close around your area? She said there is living faith. I said go there. Find four tubers of yam. Tie it and be praying, singing any song in your language you know. While you march to the pastor's, um, uh, what do you call it? The pastor's office. Whether the pastor is eating the yam or not is not his business. Only a stupid man of God resents the seed of a desperate believer. It's not whether you are more than 50% of the things people sow into my life, I don't need it. It's not for me. I recognize what it is. Is God speaking to someone? Seed faith. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. In 1 Kings 17, when our time is gone, just write it. We don't have to project it. 1 Kings 17 from verse 7 to 6. From verse 7 to 16. 1 Kings chapter 17, when you read from verse 7 to verse 16. The Bible talks there about Brook Cherith when it dried during the famine. And the Bible says that the Lord told Elijah to go to a place called Zarephath. And he said there was a widow there. God wanted to intervene in that widow's life. When the prophet got there, he said, give me water. She was running to go and bring water. And he said, please, and make some bread for me. And the woman said, I'm sorry, man of God. I respect you, but honestly, this is the last one I'm about to eat with my son so that we'll just wait until we die. And the prophet said, no, no. When you give, it does not end. When you give, you extend the life of whatever it is. The prophet was teaching her. He said, make it for me first. In our generation, they say that's a heartless and wicked, devilish prophet. But the moment she did that, the Bible says she lived off what was there until the famine was over. You can change your life. November, December is too short a time. No. November, December is too short a time, brothers and sisters. God can step into your life and do something in your life that you cannot imagine. Don't be surprised that you'll be celebrating New Year in your own house. Whereas right now you don't even have land. I'm talking to believers. Don't be surprised that you can give away up to 5-10 million by December. Whereas what you have in your account now is not up to 10,000. Listen, I'm not talking nonsense. I'm not stupid. Don't be surprised. That after 10, 20 years that your wife has been buried, that she's going to celebrate New Year two months pregnant. You do every calculation, you know it's not up to two months, but she's two months pregnant. Don't ask where the child came from. That right now, you are not even sure where your certificate is because you are tired, you have thrown it somewhere. But don't be surprised that you will be managing a business by the end of this year. Is it not God we are talking about? Is it not the God of heaven we are talking about? Number four. The fourth key is the power of prophecy. The power of the prophetic. Weapons of supernatural intervention. The power of prophecy. Second Kings chapter 7 verse 1 to 8. 
We've already discussed it. Just write it down. Second Kings chapter 7 from verse 1 to 8. The story of Elisha in Samaria. And the abundance that came to an entire land because there was a divine intervention by prophecy. Hosea chapter 12 from verse 13. Please give it to us. The Bible says, and by a prophet. Listen carefully. And by a prophet. It says, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. How did they come out of Egypt? By a prophet. Not by God. You would think God will say, oh, by me. Yes, it is by God. But the instrument that he used was a prophet. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. Listen. There are challenges that people go through in life that is totally needless. If only they can locate a genuinely anointed prophet of God, you can come out of a situation overnight. Some battles are totally needless. They are products of pride and ignorance. Take note of these things I'm saying. Pride and ignorance. Some battles are totally needless. There is enough grace and anointing to bail people out of it. A gentleman had been writing, I think it was Wayek or Neko, I can't remember, for over maybe six, seven years. I remember one time he came and he was crying. I didn't allow him to finish. I said, that's all right. Let me pray for you. It is done. And he just went and the guy testified that truly speaking, he answered nonsense in the exam. Because his brain had, he had stretched the thing, he has passed the age that he should be concentrating to be reading for Wayek. And yet it came out, he had all credits like that. And he said, truly, this is my result. I say, of course it's not your result. God gave you to help you move forward. Of course it's not your result. When other people are celebrating their intelligence, you go to God and say, thank you, this one you gave me. There are things when other people are saying, I got, you turn to God and say, this one came from you. Prophetic intervention. Brothers and sisters, God still has anointed men. No? Yes. An anointed man is not a man who speaks well. An anointed man is not a man who throws people under the anointing. There are people who are privileged by the election of grace. That God has put ancient, ancient possibilities within them for the sake of the body. Your own price is to believe. They may not look like it, but they carry it. What you have, you have. It was given to you. Are we together? I truly believe that someone tonight, I told us the remaining services for this year will be very strongly prophetic services. And it will start from tonight. Just the five minutes or so we have to pray. And then I speak over your life. When prophecy comes, receive it. Receive it. You can reject it. But you can receive it. Do you know? I listen to every koinonia message. This message now that is being preached. It's not Joshua Selman. This is the man of God teaching. Joshua Selman will listen to the man of God later in the week. And when it's time to prophesy, I will lift my hands and receive and pray in tongues. Otherwise, I will keep blessing and the anointing that came from the throne through me. Through me. I must also receive it by faith. Prayer point number one. Father, I am tired of where I am. I am tired. You are a changer of people's lives. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, I am tired of where I am, truly speaking. Lord, this year will not end like this. I've not yet seen any notable testimony in my life. And the year is about to end. Oh, God of heaven, arise, arise. Those online pray. Ela masena na malia na masia, sheda na na baya na na basia na 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 bala na na basera na ya. Lord, the favor you said I will walk in. I am yet to see it manifest, and it is November. 
the prosperity that you said I will walk in. Lord, I believed you, I still believe you. So we are desperate people. We want more, more Lord. Lift your voice and pray. We are desperate people. We want more, more Lord. We are desperate people. We want more, more Lord. We are desperate people. Tired of the status quo. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more, gotta be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things, and we press in. Gotta be more. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare over every mountain that stands between me and my result. Hear the word of the Lord. Be crushed into pieces. Lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus, hear the word of the Lord. I speak over every mountain, mountain of witchcraft, mountain of delay. I crush you by the God of heaven. Those outside pray, online pray, I decree and declare, hear the word of the Lord, who are down mountain before Joshua Selman. I command you become play. Shena masadea, shena masadea, na mana na mali ara mala bosa da da biara. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every promise. Hanging in the realm of the spirit, I prophesy by the mystery of divine intercession. You must manifest now. Lift your voice and pray. Find expression. I give you a body. My breakthrough. Find expression. My lifting. Find expression. My advancement. Find expression. I give you a body. Manifest in my life. Pray Find expression I've seen you in my dreams I've seen you in my visions I command you to manifest Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Everything I've lost. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Everything that should not have left me. But was taken away from me. I decree and declare. Return back to my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. Please be serious. Be serious. Pray. Every relationship that should not have left. Every finance that should not have left. Every favor. Every breakthrough. I call you back. Every access. 
every platform in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Please lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Spirit of God, I push you to the next level of your life. I push you to the next level of your life. And hear me, I decree. I don't know what stands your way. I come tonight in the name of Jesus and I crush it into pieces. The same way the Red Sea was divided. I command every obstacle to be divided in the name of Jesus. Hear me. Every physical scenario that must be created in the earth realm to force what is in the spirit to find expression. I schedule that event now in the name of Jesus. Hear me, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, what has tied you and limited you. That's how you thought breakthrough would come last year. It didn't come. I declare to you in these two months left, enter your rest. Enter your rest. Enter your rest. Enter your rest. Lift your hands. I want to prophesy over your finances. There is, there is the power to prosper. Listen, there is a grace that helps men prosper. In the name of Jesus, believe me as I pray this prayer for you. By the grace of God who has shown me mercy and grace, I prophesy to you, beginning from this night, favor after favor, strange financial favor. I speak it to your life. I speak it to your destiny. I speak it to your life. In the name of Jesus. Any man sitting on your glory. Jacotos Katapatea. In the name of Jesus. I declare the earth opens up tonight and swallows them. The spirit that eats up blessings when it's almost coming to you. It comes to others when it's about your turn. Something cuts you off. This is not for everybody. But I'm prophesying to someone. If your eyes saw it in the spirit. I command your hands to hold it. If you saw it in your dream. I command your hand to hold it. If you saw it in your visions. I command your hand to hold it. Hallelujah. Now listen. I pray for everyone here who is a student. That, and you are not you have already celebrated graduation. But the truth of the matter is that what is in the faculty will not graduate you. I stand before my God whom I serve. And I decree and declare strange intervention for you now. Listen, if there is anyone here, God told you that by December you should have a job. Until now, no job has entered your hands. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, wherever your job is, from the realm of the Spirit, I connect it to your life. I connect it to your life. And if there is anyone sitting there now, I overturn, I overturn until it gets to your turn. Listen, there are people God has instructed to bless you but they have been disobedient. I take sleep on them tonight. 
they must obey God on your behalf in the name of Jesus Christ please hear me I don't know what has not been working in your life I'm prophesying to you by the anointing I decree and declare it's a master we have toiled all night some of you you have toiled from January you have submitted the same prayer request miracle service after miracle service it comes to an end now in the name of Jesus it comes to an end now by the anointing of the spirit give me one minute to speak over your family members I don't know what is plaguing your family members that God must step in if not you will still cry again I change that situation now please help them help them I change that situation now may the angel of the Lord's presence in the name of Jesus go to every home and begin to correct things now I command correction 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 if there is anyone here with a health challenge that has refused to go I don't care what it is I stretch my hands to you and I command that the power of God comes upon your body now and let that sickness go I terminate that infirmity whether it's a blood disease whether it's witchcraft barrenness whatever it is I terminate it now listen please believe me whatever you have seen in your dreams and visions that you know it is of God I release my faith you I pull it to your destiny don't be foolish and say how will it happen no we are talking of the God of heaven the anointing for divine intervention this is the anointing that will be functioning all through this week I decree thank God it is Sunday I'm sure that's why God made it Sunday I prophesy Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday until Friday I command them days of divine intervention days of divine intervention I speak it to the realm of the spirit angels of intervention moments of intervention the last prayer and we are done in the name of Jesus every mal man that your favor is tied to shakotos katabarakata between now and Friday I connect you to them all kinds of favor believe it I decree and declare if that man is alive on earth then between now and Friday let there be a strange connection wave your hands to Jesus and tell him thank you thank you Lord we give you praise we give you praise we believe you we give you praise we give you praise everyone stand our time is gone please I'm saying this sincerely from my heart I don't want you to miss any of the services that are left we have one more miracle service for the year for this month and the remaining just I don't know maybe five six weeks please don't miss it because what the Lord showed me we need to push ourselves to make sure this word comes to pass every week will be a miracle service every week strange utterance is coming to redirect and program our lives in the name of Jesus Christ I want to give an opportunity our time is gone thank you for your patience there are people here please keep standing everyone inside and outside there are people here you heard me preach and the first intervention you need is to surrender your entire life to Jesus Christ Probably you came here for the first time. You came frustrated, trusting God to give your life order and direction. And there might be people who had given their lives to Christ at one point, but things just went haywire. And you're saying, man of God, I want to be a product of God's mercy and grace. Please, our time is gone wherever you are. 
overflow one through if, if, if there's another overflow three or any other place those online you can connect and pray the prayer with me wherever you are please make your way to the front right now god bless you let's honor them as they come there are people coming the holy spirit is certainly talking to a few people make your way to the front god bless you thank you for your boldness god bless you sir god bless you ma god bless you please clear the way for those coming from outside don't be afraid don't be ashamed there are others standing here already so come quickly come quickly please if you came with someone and is coming out allow them to come don't interrupt them hallelujah don't interrupt them very quickly please hallelujah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for coming out this is koinonia i want to lead you to jesus christ please lift your right hand thank you for coming say after me lord jesus i love you i believe that you are the son of god that you came and died and shed your blood for me i receive of your mercy i receive of your grace i hand my life totally to you tonight i ask you to help me i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that from tonight i will never be the same i move forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted father i decree and declare that you honor the decisions that these ones have made this is the beginning of greatness in your lives in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i declare the power of the devil broken over your life you will begin to walk in victory from today in the name of jesus amen and amen now please i want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands all of you you turn to the back you see a gentleman waving his hands please all of you just follow him very quickly and um they will talk to you